number now, 577-921-7795. That's 577-921-7795. Midwest specializes in helping entrepreneurs of all kinds. Run small businesses or do we get health insurance where we work to protect our families with affordable health insurance? Call 877-921-7795. Now, the team has to be a new membership of the private in most states. The model is a different city of all the students and musicians. You are listening to a special best dog for
Patriot fans, welcome to the Jewel of the Atlantic League that is TD Bank Ballpark. What a perfect day for baseball as your Somerset Patriots host the Bridgeport Bluefish. Tickets have been going off the hook here at TD Bank Ballpark. People have been calling left and right. Not only are we going to have a great game on the field, but after the game, we got the biggest fireworks show in New Jersey right here at TD Bank Ballpark. During the game, the players are actually going to be wearing red, white, and blue special jerseys to benefit Operation Shoebox in New Jersey. These jerseys will support our troops, and fans can actually bid on these jerseys in a raffle that's taking place in our concourse. And not only are the players going to be patriotic, you the fans are going to be patriotic as well. We've got brand new merchandise this year in our team store, specifically geared for the 4th of July weekend. Before the game, I had a chance to catch up with our director of merchandise, Robert Crossman. Robert, happy 4th of July weekend. Tell us about some of the new apparel in the team store. Hey, Justin, thanks. Uh, but yeah, we got some cool stuff I'm excited about. You know, the Stars and Stripes here, um, the Navy, it's all flex fit. Uh, Navy uh, color and a, and a sharp red color stands out. Um, got some great, uh, you know, designs here. We took some of our logos and, and did uh, some Stars and Stripes as well. So uh, it's sharp, you know, it's great. We're all stocked up, ready to go for the holiday weekend. What are some other fan favorites in the team store? Uh, you know, we got some uh, fan favorites, you know, the customized jerseys, uh, you know, are definitely great because people, you know, they can come here, they can leave on the spot with a customized jersey, something that's tailored to their, their name or their favorite player. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with the, uh, the old, the almighty uh, foam finger. Everyone seems to like the foam finger, but yeah. Uh, customized stuff, you know, now uh, too, you can check out the tie-dye, we got tie-dye t-shirts in here. Rainbow, reactive, uh, kaleidoscope is what they call them, so yeah, good stuff. And lastly, there's a great new line of women's apparel too, right? Yeah, the uh, the women's apparel actually, I, um, we spent a lot of time in the off season this year, um, kind of expanding the women's line, trying to make uh, get some stuff in that actually fits a wide variety of uh, you know sizes. You know, we got the flowy design, you know, it's just the classic fits as well. We got Missy design, so we're excited. We tried to streamline the uh, the logos across the uh, men's and women's line too. So I thought I thought everything came out great. Got some clear designs, so yeah, pretty sharp. The store looks great. Thanks for your time, Rob. Enjoy the air conditioning. Thanks. Thank you. So if you're here at the ballpark, get inside that team store. If you're watching on SPN.TV, no worries. Log on to SomersetPatriots.com and order your official apparel right there. We're going to step aside when we come back. We'll have starting lineups. We'll have first pitch. And we'll have baseball right here on SPN.TV. Live from TD Bank Ballpark in lovely Bridgewater, New Jersey, WCTC and SPN.TV proudly present another production of Somerset Patriots Baseball. As and I, your Somerset Patriots, host the Bridgeport Bluefish in the second game of a three-game series featuring these flagship franchises. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on this gorgeous Saturday evening. We're expecting a capacity crowd on hand here at TD Bank Ballpark. Thanks for tuning in, whether it be via SPN.TV, across the globe on WCTCAM.com, maybe locally here in Central Jersey on 1450 AM on your radio dial, or maybe via our free iPhone, iPad, or Android app. Just search 1450 WCTC in the App Store and download that free app immediately. Glad to have Mike Lawrence back behind the glass in our CTC headquarters, our entire broadcast venue crew producing this one. How about your Somerset Patriots? First half, Liberty Division champions. They're taking on the Bridgeport Bluefish. The Bluefish have been struggling this year, specifically against the Somerset Patriots. 
Bluefish are just 1-8 and eight against Summerson. and they've lost eight straight specifically against Summerson alone. Good pitching matchup for you this evening. It's Matt Iazano, the lefty for Bridgeport, 2-2, two 2.47 and two, 2 ERA, going up against the righty Matt Langwell, 3-6, 3.87. ERA. The Patriots are their high water mark of 21 games above 500, 44 and 23. Meanwhile, the Bluefish boast the worst record in the Atlantic League at just 22 and 46. The second half will officially begin on Monday, so these two teams just gearing up for the second half. Summer said the postseason for them starts on September 24th, but still a lot to play for, a lot of pride to play for, and you know, you always want to play well, specifically when you have a packed house in attendance like we have tonight. We're expecting over 8,000 in attendance tonight. We're going to have a, a post-game fire Fireworks show as well. It's Operation Shoebox Day at the ballpark, so the Patriots are wearing special red, white, and blue um, Stars and Stripes jerseys as fans have a chance to bid on these jerseys in our main concourse via a tricky tray raffle, and all proceeds will benefit Operation Shoebox, which affects military veterans across the country. And we'll talk with the executive director of Operation Shoebox, Rod Hirsch, in the top of the fifth inning to pick his brain. But right now, Somerset's rolling. Since the calendar's turned from June to July, the Somerset Patriots are 3-0. They're playing very, very well right now. They won the series opener last night, 7-5. And this is a Bridgeport Bluefish team. As a pitching staff, they've issued the second most walks. And Somerset, they're the most patient team in the Atlantic League. They have the most walks as an offense, so this is not a good combo for Bridgeport. Matt Langwell and his battery mate Adam Donahue have taken the field. That means the Bluefish will get up on the top step of the dugout down the third baseline. Sparky Slider and our new mascot, General Admission, still riling everybody up, but everybody's going to be calm for a moment as we're going to step aside for the national anthem. So when we come back, we'll have starting lineups, we'll have first pitch, and we'll have baseball. Game number 68 of this marathon 140-game season coming up right here on SBN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Let's go another 30 here. Thirty more. Beautiful rendition of the National Anthem by Grace Monteleone as we are just about ready for baseball. So let's meet the starting lineups first for the visiting Bridgeport Bluefish as they are led by ninth year skipper Willie Upshaw. Leading off in center field will be James Simmons. 
Hitting second, Prentice Redmond in right field. Batting third, Ramon Castro at third base. Putting up, J.R. Towns at DH. Batting fifth, Louis Lopez at first base. Hitting sixth, Denny Almonte in left field. And seven, eight, nine, respectively, Louis Rodriguez at catcher. Juan Martinez at second base. And Mike Richard, the shortstop, rounds out the order. These nine gentlemen will be facing the righty hurler for the Somerset Patriots, Matt Langwell. Langwell toes the rubber. Six foot two, 222 pound, 28 year old from College Station, Texas. Throws the two seam, four seam cutter curve, and he's got a great changeup to keep hitters off balance. Numbers in the season for Matt Langwell 12 starts, 3 and 6 record, 3.86 ERA, 65 innings pitched, 64 hits allowed, so a hit per inning, 51 Ks, 25 walks. That's an ideal 2 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio, and opponents are hitting just 255 against Matt Langwell. Langwell only has one win against May 22nd. He's pitched a lot better over the last six weeks, has not got a lot of runs. Support. He's coming off uh, only a three inning performance, though, against the Sugarland Skeeters, where he gave up six hits and three runs. Here's the defense that'll be that'll be playing behind Matt Langwell, left to right in the outfield. It will be right Tucker Montanez, left to right on the diamond. Smith, Masonette, Kelly, Barden, and the batter man, the aforementioned Matt Langwell, is Adam Donahue. Absolutely gorgeous evening here, Saturday, July 5th. We're gonna have fireworks after the game as well. Just a perfect day for baseball. 80 degrees as Langwell's throwing his warm-up pitches. Langwell this season against Bridgeport, 1-1 one one with a 4.19 ERA. He actually picked up the loss against Bridgeport when these two teams first met in the first meeting of the year. And then since that meeting, Somerset has rolled eight straight wins against the Blue Fitch. Patriots boast the best record in the Atlantic League. Bridgeport boasts the worst record in the league. You can see a capacity crowd on hand. Here via SPN.TV. Finally, some good weather. Both teams were able to take batting practice before the game. A rarity here in Central Jersey the past week as we've had storms left and right. Two games have been postponed due to rain earlier this week. Plus, it was raining champagne earlier when Somerset clinched a postseason berth. But it's all dry right now. Perfect day for baseball. Hope everybody's having a great 4th of July weekend. Barbecuing at home. Watching slash listening some Somerset Patriot baseball. That is the way to go. Here's James Simmons. He's going to dig in for the Bridge for Bluefish. As Langwell is just about ready to rock and fire here. Second to last game of the first half for both these teams. And the first pitch to James Simmons, a fastball away. It's officially go time at 7.09 p.m. Eastern time. We are underway from the jewel of the Atlantic lead. It's TD Bank Ballpark that opened up 16 years ago. Simmons hitting 299, nine homers, 32 RBI. And he fouls this one behind home plate. Count one and one. It's 317 in the left field line, 315 in the right field line, 365 in the gaps, and 402 to dead center field. Simmons leads the team at home runs, yet he's the leadoff hitter. Langwell operates from the first base side of the hill. Kicks delivers. Fastball away, count two and one. The long ball has plagued Langwell recently. He's given up at least one home run in five of his last seven starts. Got to keep the ball down. That's what he's been working a lot with Corey Dommel, the outstanding pitching coach, during his side set. Fastball away, down three and one here to Simmons. Umpires for you this evening. It's the same three-man crew from last night. Tony Sandy is now at third. J.B. Torres at first. And the crew chief is Carlos Guzman behind the dish. It'll be a 3-1 here to Simmons. The Bluefish have eight righties in their lineup and one switch hitter. Swung on and missed. Down three and two. The one switch hitter is Danny Almonte. He's not due up until sixth in this batting order. The Bluefish are in their road grays. The Patriots are in their home whites with special kind of Stars and Stripes uniforms that are being auctioned off by Operation Shoebox. And it's a full count walk issued to James Simmons. There you just saw Willie Upshaw, the ninth-year skipper for Bridgeport. Patriots are guided by second-year skipper Brett Jody. So it's a leadoff walk for Simmons. One on, nobody out, no score top of the first. This will bring up Brennan's Redmond. Redmond hit a three-run home run in last night's series opening 7-5 loss for Bridgeport. Hitting 267, four homers, and 24 RBI. First pitch to Redmond is in for a called strike, down 0-1. Redmond is one of 14 ex-big leaguers in the Bridgeport Bluefish. Somerset has seven ex-big leaguers, so in this contest, 
21 of the 50 active players were once in the show. Pretty impressive. Poke down the right field line foul. Down 0-2. Langwell's an ex-big leaguer himself. Just last year he was in the show with the Diamondbacks and Indians plenty time. 1-0 record, 13 games, 4.15 ERA in the show for Langwell. Somerset would love to turn two here. They have the best defense in the Atlantic League. Committed a lead low 51 errors. The North Fielders pinching up the middle. We're over to check on Simmons. Nothing doing. Simmons is a threat to run. Simmons is a five-tool guy over at first. Donnie, he glances into the dugout for the sign here. Wait in the 0-2. Here to Prentice Redmond. In his third straight year with Bridgeport. Fastball just off the plate. Now one and two. Bridgeport has a strong nucleus. They have guys like James Simmons, who's been around for a couple of years. Prentice Redmond's been around for three years. Louis Lopez has been around for nine years with Bridgeport. Louis Rodriguez has been around for seven years. Billy Upshaw's the ninth year skipper. The one two. Weak ground ball to the first baseline. Foul. Now one and two. So it's a strong nucleus. And despite the fact that they have 14 X big leaguers, more than half their roster is X big leaguers, that doesn't mean that that's going to translate to immediate success into the Atlantic League. I mean, they're boasting a 22 and 46 record. To put this in perspective. John Hunton has as many saves as Bridgeport does wins. Hunton's 22 for 25 in save opportunities. Bridgeport is 22 and 46 in the season. The one two poke down the right field line foul. We'll do it again. But Somerset's in the midst of playing 33 games in 33 days. This has been a grind for Somerset. And I know you're probably saying, well, at least, you know, they had the rain out, so the service half day off. But they're not really days off because the guys still show up in the field. They have to wait around for at least an hour and a half before the game is called. Uh, so I guess they get to go home an hour early. The one, two, throw over to check on Simmons. Nothing doing. But the good news for Somerset, they're in the midst of playing 11 of 14 games here at home. Somerset is a very good home team this season. Popped up into left field. Should be playable for Ty Wright. Camps under and makes the catch. One away. This season, Somerset is 25 and 11 at home. So one out, one on, no score top of the first. This will bring up Ramon Castro. Castro out of Venezuela. Castro has one home run of the season. That one home run team against Somerset two weeks ago. Right here at TD Bank Ballpark. He likes hitting here at TD Bank Ballpark. After all, he was the 2008 All-Star Game MVP when it was played right here at TD Bank Ballpark. Well, then at the time it was called Commerce Bank Ballpark. Another throw over to check on Simmons. Nothing doing. Bridgeport and Somerset are two flagship franchises. Both were established in 1998, the league's first year of existence. Fastball away, count 1-0. Oh. Bridgeport has won one Atlantic League championship. That was back in 1999. Patriots, the winningest franchise in the league, having amassed over 1,000 wins as an organization. Plus, they've won five Atlantic League championships, 0-1, 0-3, 0-5, 0-8, 0-9. The 2014 be that special year where they're already postseason bound, so it looks like the 1-0. Oh. Bound in any behind home play, count 1-1. One we're still waiting to see who will win the Freedom Division. If York wins tonight, then they're in the playoff. York's taking on Lancaster. One ball, one strike, one out. Scoreless in the top of the first. Yesterday's game got off to a slow start the first couple innings. Looks like this one will be the same as well. Foul behind home play, count one and two. Bridgeport just can't quite square anything up against Matt Langwell, but then Matt Langwell just can't quite put these guys away right now early on. So the two-strike clap will trickle on here. One ball, two strikes, one out. Scoreless top of the first. 
Langwell began his college tenure at Sam Houston State, then he transferred to Rice University, where he was a sport administration major and was drafted in the 11th round in 2008 by the Indians. The 1 2 is outside, count 2 and 2. This is Langwell's first year in the Atlantic League. When he played for Rice, he was outstanding. He actually got into the got into the Owls to a College World Series appearance in both 2007 and 2008. The 2-2. Two -two. Long set for Langwell. Delivers. Forward down the right field line. Foul. And we'll do it again. Langwell did not begin the year with Somerset. He actually joined the team the first week of the season. He was signed to replace Josh Lowey, who bolted for the Mexican League. But he's been with them since the first week of the season, towing the rubber every five days. Somerset originally was going to six-man rotation for a while, but now they've moved Daryl McCall to the bullpen. McCall threw a hitting of relief yesterday. The 2-2. Foul behind home play will do it again. So this has been a lengthy top of the first inning already. We're just three batters in. Castro won two Atlantic League championships with York in 2010 and 2011. This guy's a winner. Big lead for Simmons over at first. Barton's holding him on tightly. Two, two count, one out, scoreless top one. Righty on righty matchup, runner not going. And this ball is hit to deep left field, going back his tie right. To the warning track, to the wall. It's going to be off the base of the wall. Simmons going to chug in at third. It'll be a stand-up double for Ramon Castro. So the eight-pitch battle is won by Ramon Castro. Runners on second and third, one out. Scoreless top of the first. Ty Wright drifted back, drifted back, drifted back. Ended up hitting the base of the wall. Good base running by Simmons to at least hold up on that play. You know, if Wright makes the catch, you don't want to get doubled up. So this will bring up J.R. Towles. Having a very good year. 339, seven homers, 26 RBI. He does not have enough at bats to qualify to be amongst batting leaders because he missed a couple weeks with a hamstring. Infield's going to play back to one out. Fastball in for a call strike. Count 0 and 1. Jay usually is the catcher, but he's just DHing right now as they're easing him into the lineup with those nagging hamstring injuries that he's been suffering through. No batting gloves approach for Towels. Whips one in the any behind home plate. Count 0 and 2. Talos is his favorite player growing up was Jorge Posada. That's why he wanted to become a catcher. That's why he wears no batting gloves. Posada did not wear batting gloves either. Runners on second and third, one out, 0 2 count. This is when Langwell needs to rear back and get a strike out here. Meanwhile, Talos is just looking for a productive out, looking for his 27th RBI of the season, be an RBI ground out or RBI sack fly. The 0 2. Waste pitch outside. Count one and two. Cows played for the Houston Astros back in 2007. And in one game in September of 2007, he actually had eight RBI in one contest. Which was an Astros record for most ribbies in a game by one player. The one, two. Low and away. Count two and two. Hit a grand slam in that game and knocked in some runs some other different ways as well. 2 2 counter to J.R. Tolls. Simmons on third. He walked in a full count. Castro's on second. He doubled the deep left center. The only out in this game was a fly out to medium left field by Prentice Redmond. It'll be a 2 2 here from Langwell to Tolls. The pitch plunked him on the wrist. Or did that get the bat? Well, Tolles is clenching his wrist. Maybe it hit the bat. I don't know why he would be clenching his wrist. I guess it's a dead ball foul. It didn't hit him. But he's wincing around like it hit him. Maybe he's just trying to uh, pretend like it hit him so he can get on base. But it, what's really in the field is that it hit the bat, so it's a foul ball. I thought it maybe flanked off his wrist. I don't know why he's wincing around. Maybe just the, the, the vibrations from the bat startled Tolles a little bit. Nonetheless, it's a strike, so Somerset gets a break. It'll be a 2 2 here with one out. Runners on second and third. The pitch. 
smack down the right field line foul. And we'll do it again. So this has been a lengthy top of the first inning already. This is the fourth batter of the inning, and Matt Langwell has already thrown 24 pitches. Summer said he used four different relievers yesterday as McCall, Hyde, Raccoon, and Hunton each threw an inning of relief after Gary Moran picked up the win, throwing five innings. It'll be a 2-2 here to Taos. He's going to choke up on the bat here with two strikes. Has long blonde hair that flows into the back of his helmet. The pitch served on the right field line. Again foul. As the home plate umpires are balls from the bat boy already. Four, four batters in this game. We may need a sports authority right here. Think of some baseballs. It'll be a 2-2 here. Langwell just trying to put towels away. Two ex big leaguers going at it. See what Donnie he calls here. His battery name. Puts down a sign. Langwell agrees. The 2 2. Breaking ball swung on it. Missed strike three. So that lengthy battle is won by Langwell. Sharp breaking ball. Good 12 6 fight on that one. By far his best pitch was 25 pitches. Huge strikeout. One away, uh, two away. Now that was a situation where Talos just wanted to play to run via an out. And Talos visibly frustrated. So here comes Louis Lopez. Somerset's been Lopez's kryptonite. He is just 2 for 29 against Somerset this season. 216, 218, 3 homers and 20 RBI. In for a called strike, Count Owen. Infield obviously now back, two outs, plays to first. Forget about the runners on second and third. Lopez, the longest tenure bluefish player in nine years. Wide stance, slider away, count one and one. Lopez went to Coastal Carolina, where he was recently inducted into the Coastal Carolina Hall of Fame. Signed as an undrafted free agent by the Toronto Blue Jays way back in 1996. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. Another good off-speed pitch thrown by Matt Langwell. Count one and two. Langwell's a pitch in the, approaching the 30-pitch plateau in this half inning, but if he survives unscathed, who cares? Scoreless top of the second. One-two count. Runners on second and third. Langwell looking for back-to-back -back K's. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Back-to-back -back case for Matt Langle. He rears back and strikes out Towns and Lopez to strand two runners in scoring position. Through one half inning, it's done for Bridgeport. Somerset, they're coming to bat on the New Talk Radio, 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Hey there, can I help you? Sorry. Hi. Uh, we need a new family plan. How about 10 gigs of data to share and unlimited talk and text? Oh, 10 gigs sounds pretty good. Yeah, really good. And for a family of four, it's 160 a month. What? Get out of here. Sorry, are we still doing the whisper thing? Or... Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. yes, we'll take it. Introducing our best ever family pricing. For instance, a family of four gets 10 gigs of data with unlimited talk and text for $160 a month, only from AT&T. Affinity Federal Credit Union, banking, investing, advising. Learn how you can lost something better at www.joinaffinity.com. Shopping for a new car? Hit a home run with all the great deals available now. Your Tri-State Ford dealer, proud sponsor of Somerset Patriots Baseball. Visit tristateford.com for more information today. 
We head to the bottom of the first inning. We're scoreless. Let's meet the starting lineups for the homestanding Somerset Patriots, led by second-year skipper Brett Jody. Leading off, Johnny Tucker in center field, batting second, Brian Barden at first base. Hitting third, Mike Wilson at DH. Leading up, Corey Smith at third base. Hitting fifth, Luis Montanez in right field, batting sixth, high right and left field at 7 8 9 respectively. Adam Donahue at catcher, Edwin Mason at shortstop, and Scott Kelly, the second baseman, rounds out the order. These nine gentlemen will be facing the southpaw, Matt Ionazzo. The lefty is 5'9", 170-pounder from Norwalk, Connecticut, just 24 years old. Numbers for Dinazzo on the season. 2-2 two and two record, 2.47 ERA, 18 games, 5 starts, 43.2 innings pitch, 48 hits allowed, 26 Ks, 9 walks, an ideal 3-1 strikeout to walk ratio, and opponents are hitting 291 against Dinazzo. Here's the defense will be playing behind Dinazzo, left to right in the outfield. It will be Almonte, Simmons, Redmond, left right of the diamond. Castro, Richard, Martinez, Lopez, and the battery man of Inazo is Rodriguez. Inazo has faced Somerset twice before. Two games, one start, no record, no ERA, 7.2 innings, 8 hits, 4 Ks, 2 walks, 3 runs, all of them unearned. First pitch to Tucker is in for a call strike. Down 0 and 1. Tucker's wearing the neon yellow spikes. And he says he wears those on fireworks nights, and that's the case this evening. We'll have the post-game firework extravaganza immediately after the final out. 1-1 one, one counter to Jay Tux. Hitting 260, no homers, 22 ready. Fastball up and away. Now 2-1. and one. Tucker is shuttled between second base and center field this season. He's in center field this evening. Ionazzo kicks delivered. Cranked down the left field line, sharply hit foul. Down two and two. Tucker's been the catalyst of this team. Look at his stats. 260 no homers, 22 RBI. I know they're solid, but he has so many intangibles. Led the Atlantic League walks last year in the upper echelon of three passes this year. Two two. Three hopper to third. Ramon Castro slings it across the diamond. And in time, there's one away. One out, nobody on, no score, bottom of the third. This will bring up Ryan Barden. Matt Ionazzo was undrafted at the University of Pittsburgh, where he was a communications major. So Barden digging in, the second oldest member of the Somerset Patriots, 33 years old, hitting just 211, two homers, six RBI. Four of those six RBI have though, come this week, and a big two run home run that put the Patriots in front when they clinched the Liberty Division first half title on Tuesday. He had a two RBI double yesterday. Down 0 and 1. So Barden's coming around. He's playing well. Again, the year of the Mexican League. The 0 1. Swing and a miss. Good change up from Ionazzo. Down 0 and 2. There you see the Patriots sporting those stars and stripes white jerseys with the American flag kind of embedded in the Patriot logo. Low and in. Now 1 and 2. Fans that are here in attendance can place a bid on these jerseys via Tricky Tray Raffle behind the home plate area in the main concourse. The one-two. Poke down the right field line. Val will do it again. As all the proceeds will benefit Operation Shoebox, which is a great organization to benefit the military. The one-two. High chopper to the second base back. Charging in is Mike Richard. Overhand toss to first in time. Two out. Brett Jody, the second year skipper. What a job he's done. He's now been the skipper for a year and a half with Somerset. And in each of the 70 halves, he's got the Somerset Patriots to at least 44 wins. 46 wins in the first half of 2013. 44 wins in the second half of 2013. And he's got 44 wins here in the first half of 2014. And there's still three more games to go, including tonight. Tonight, tomorrow, and then July 30th. Doubleheader. One of those games will count towards the first half because of a rain out in Lancaster this past week. Here's Big Mike Wilson. 1 0 counter to Big Mike. Second bench press, 350 pounds. And he pops this one up down the right field line, going to tail over to the lawn seating area. Now Count one and one. Matt Ionazzo, this guy's living the dream, the pitcher for the Bridgeport Bluefish. He grew up in Norwalk, Connecticut. That's just 15 minutes away from where the Bridgeport Bluefish play baseball. He grew up going to Bridgeport Bluefish games. He actually played his high school games at Harbor Yard. 
That's the Bridgeport Bluefish's facility. And now he's playing for the fish. This is a dream come true for this kid. The 1-1. One -one. Fastball away, count 2-1. Smart guy, Inos. Laude in his national Latin exam in high school. Chopper behind home play foul. Now two and two to Big Mike Wilson. Anaz originally signed as an undrafted free agent with the Cubs in 2012. Peaked at the high A level. This is his third year of playing pro ball. The two two. Foul into the netting behind home play. Scoreless bottom of the first. Two outs, nobody on. Big Mike Wilson at the plate. Big Mike out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Six days ago, he celebrated his 31st birthday, so happy belated birthday to Mike Wilson. The 2 2. Swing and a miss. Good change up. Strike three. Perfect first frame for Matt Ionazzo. It's a matchup of the Mats. Matt Langle versus Matt Ionazzo. We're scoreless through one. Top two we go in the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Somerville Aluminum is a full-service home remodeling company. Our new state-of-the-art showroom provides our team with the tools they need to help you realize your dream home. Under one roof, you can touch and feel decking materials, check out our working shower display, or walk through our fully functional kitchen. Seeing is believing, and we welcome you to visit us at our new location at 20 County Line Road, Branchburg, New Jersey. We're always here for the homeowner. Be home assured with Somerville Aluminum. Second thing is brought to you by Summer of Aluminum, full service home remodeling, servicing New Jersey since 1950. Visit our new state of the art showroom at 20 County Line Road in Branchburg for all your home remodeling needs. Do your project once, go with the pros, Summer of Aluminum. Call them at 908 725 8401 or go to www.summervolaluminum.com. Well, we head to the top of the second, we're scoreless. It will be El Monte, Rodriguez, and Martinez due up for the Bridgeport Bluefish. Langwell's throwing his warm-up pitches right now to pass the crowd on, and we're expecting over 8,000 phones, which is buzzing off the hook earlier today. We almost couldn't handle them. It was absolutely crazy. Plus, postseason tickets should be going on sale very soon at the ticket office. The postseason begins September 24. Somerset is elected to take the back three games of, of the best of five set at home. So the 26th, 27th, and 28th will be at home. Somerset would open up on the road to the 24th and 25th against the destination to be determined. It could be Bridgeport if they win the second half. Curveball in, down 0-1. Almonte hitting 206, seven homers, 26 RBI. He likes hitting at Somerset, though. Three of his seven homers have come against the Pats. One of those seven homers came in last night's 7-5 loss. Great the deep right center field off Gary Moran. 0-2 count here to Almonte. Swing and a miss, strike three. Three straight strikeouts for Langwell. Two to end the first, one to start the second. He's found his groove right now, and all strikeouts were swinging. Here comes Louis Rodriguez. He's also known as the Machete because he just loves to gun down a runner. Rodriguez has always been known for his defense rather than his offense. Hitting below the Mendoza line this year, 189, a homer, and 13 RBI. Out of Johnson City, New York. In for a call strike count 0-1. This is his seventh straight year with Bridgeport. 
and it's the second straight year as being hitting instructor and catcher. This guy works double duty. He throws BP and he hits batting practice as well. Foul behind home plate. Town 0 and 2. Somerset Patriots still in the top set of the dugout. I mean, how, in, how into it is this team? You know, everybody's in the top set of the dugout. This team has already wrapped up a playoff berth. Fastball the way, count one and two. Brett Jody was hitting these guys grounders at 3 p.m. today. These guys are dedicated. I mean, for people to think Somerset's going to take their foot off the gas pedal until September 24, you're dead wrong. It was optional BP today, and everybody took that in practice. You know, optional means mandatory in Somerset. The one, two. Fastball the way, count two and two. But this team's having a lot of fun. I mean, you heard from Corey Haroldcheck if you tuned in the post game show yesterday. He says, you know, everybody just feeds off each other. No matter if you're a bench guy, a starting, uh, a starter, it doesn't matter. Fastball away, count three and two. And now that Somerset has clinched a postseason berth, you have the luxury of maybe starting some guys that normally wouldn't get time, like a Scott Kelly, a Corey Haroldcheck. You can experiment with positions a little bit. Barton playing on first base. Hit to right center field. Should be in the ballpark for Johnny Tucker to make a basket catch. Two outs, nobody on, no score, top of the second. Time for the Fleming and Car and Truck Country Family of Dealership's upcoming events calendar. Well, this is the second to last game of the first half. Well, the series finale tomorrow at 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be on the air at 5 o'clock straight up, exclusively on WCTC as Juan Martinez digs in with his 215 batting average. Four homers, 23 RBI for Martinez. Then everybody will get a clean slate to start the second half on Monday. Somerset will actually be in York, Pennsylvania for a three-game midweek set with the Rebs. They'll be back home for four games with Sugarland, and then we'll have the All-Star. Grenon to short. Scooped up by Mason Etch. And in the inning, and it does. Good pick by Barton. Inning over. One to half. No score. Bottom two we go on the New Talk Radio, 1450 WCTC and Somerville Aluminum is a full-service home remodeling company. Our new state-of-the-art showroom provides our team with the tools they need to help you realize your dream home. Under one roof, you can touch and feel decking materials, check out our working shower display, or walk through our fully functional kitchen. Seeing is believing, and we welcome you to visit us at our new location at 20 County Line Road, Ranchburg, New Jersey. We're always here for the homeowner. Be home assured with Somerville Aluminum. Hi. Hi, sorry, we're closed. What? I sorry. need help with my deposit. The bank has rules. It's really quick. I can't hear you. I promise I'm going to be really quick. I don't under. I can't hear you through the glass. I'll be quick. You'll be quick. That's what you just said? Yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We're closed. You know what? Okay, that's... Hey, sir, I just... Okay. It's time to bank human again. That's why TD Bank has the longest hours and even stays open an extra 10 minutes for when you run late. TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. When my son... Care Clinics Access Center is open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. For more information, visit our website at www.careyourclinic.org. We know you're going to rock your style from Monday morning to Sunday night. That's why Supercuts is open seven days a week. Your schedule is our priority. So we're open most evenings, no appointments necessary. Check out Supercuts.com to find your nearest Supercuts to rock the cut wherever you want. Supercuts, a cut above the rest. Getting their cuts in this half inning will be Corey Smith, Luis Montanez, and Ty Wright. Three righties. Corey Smith will stroll to the batter's box. Corey Smith is the cleanup hitter, and the cleanup hitter is brought to you by Raritan Building Services Corporation. So Big Smitty is digging in. He absolutely loves to squish the fish in his free time. He owns Bridgeport, hitting 414 with four homers and 10 RBI against Bridgeport this season. 67% of his homers have come against Bridgeport. 25% of his RBI have come against Bridgeport. Hitting above the Ted Williams line against Bridgeport. He's Willie Upshaw's worst nightmare. Score this bottom two. Here's Big Smitty. Open stance from the right side. The pride of Piscataway. 
First pitch in for a called strike. Down 0-1. Corey Smith hitting 287, six homers, 40 RBI, putting up all-star type numbers. Fastball away, count one and one. The all-star representative should be named in the next 24 to 48 hours. Of course, the game is on July 16th at Constellation Field. The 1-1. One, one. Fastball up and away, count two. Now, I have no inside inside knowledge of who's going to be an all-star. I did vote a lot of times on the AtlanticLeague.com. You can't vote for pitchers, but I did vote for the position players. Granted to third. Thrown across the diamond by Castro. Well in time, one away. And to me, I think slam dunk candidates for the all-star game for Somerset should be Corey Smith, Matt Zielinski, Adam Donahue, Jason Lowey and John Hunt, and I think those five are guaranteed. Monty is, is a French all-star as well. You know, with the new format this year, you can't take as many Patriots as you would like. Monty, the 265, did not play yesterday. It was a standard day off. That's the luxury you have of clinching a postseason bird. You can rest a, a, a core player like a Luis Monty and not miss a beat and still win a ball game. Monty hits this one to deep left center field, going back is Simmons, to the warning track, to the wall, it is gone! Team leading ninth home run for Luis Montanez. He recharged his batteries on the off day yesterday, and Somerset draws first blood. They lead 1-0 here in the second. See, you don't miss a beat. You can sit Montanez, and this guy is still going to pound home runs. And that's what clinching the first half is going to do. It's going to allow guys to stay fresh. So they still have the power in them to launch homers. That was a deep shot to deep left center field. Hit off the second wall. And I believe it bounced back into the field of play. So a big shot for Monty. He has three home runs this week. At two in a game against Sugarland a few days ago. So Somerset leads 1-0, and you have to feel good when Somerset takes an early lead. The Patriots are 27-5 this season, they score first. And this ball stroked in the left center field for a base hit. Rounding first is Ty Wright, he'll stop right there after a wide banana turn. One on, one out, one run already in here in the bottom of the second. And this will bring up Adam Donahue. Donnie having a great year. Hitting 286, four homers, 25 RBI. Big fan of country music. First pitch, hits the outside corner for a called strike. Down 0 and 1. Modest lead for Ty Wright. Ayanazo has a good pickoff move as a lefty. The 0 1. Knee high for a strike. Down 0 and 2. If Somerset wins today, tomorrow, and then the July 30th game, they would have the most wins in a half in their franchise history 47. Fastball upstairs 1 and 2. You, if you were to tell me this team. Without Jake Fox, Yudeski Sanchez, Corey Alder, Josh Lowey, Roy Merritt, David Harden, Graham Taylor, and Jim Hoey was to have a better first half than last year's team, I wouldn't have believed. But this is a testament to Big John Hunter, the architect of this team, to put this team together. I mean, Somerset has lost eight players to affiliated ball, lost two more to overseas in, in Mexico and Taiwan. And this team hasn't missed a beat. It's not about rebuilding, it's about reloading in Somerset. Stroked in the shallow center field. Simmons going to play it on a hop. Wow, James Simmons must have not seen that ball in the sun. That should have been caught. Enough hang time. But he's going to play it casually on a hop. So Big Don gets a knock. His average continues to rise. Two on, one out. One run already in. Somerset leads 1-0. And here comes Edwin Masonette. So after Ian Ozzo retired the, retired the first four hitters in a row, he's now given up hits to the last three batters. Homer, single, single. Here's Edwin Mason, and his walk-up song is The Man by Al Obach. He feels like the man right now. He's hit safely in six of his last eight ball games. 
in for a call strike count on one more. Naso just hitting 221 in the season, but he's hitting 265 against Brick Ford pitching. So he likes squishing the fish too. Of course, anywhere except home. And he's going to hit this one a short. Botched by Mike Richard. He's going to flip it to second for the 6 4 fielder's choice. Oh, that should have been a tailor made double play ball. That should have ended this inning. Now, it's not an error because you cannot presume the double play. Good composure by Richard to at least knock that one down and get the force at second. But the inning extends for Scott Kelly. And what this does, it, it's, it allows Brett Jody and the Somerset Pacers to clear the bottom of the order. So even if Kelly gets out here and you don't get any more runs, well, then you would have your customary leadoff hitter, Johnny Tucker, to lead off the third. So that's a big error. Uh, it's not an error, but it's a mental blunder right there. It's a play that should have been made by Richard. That should have ended this inning. Throw over to check on Meso. Nothing doing. Scott Kelly, the kid Kelly. 23 years old out of West Windsor, New Jersey. From the College of New Jersey Division Three school. This guy has a lot of heart. Throw over to check on Masonette. Nothing doing. One of the hardest workers on this team is Scott Kelly. Richard's just praying that I and Isaac can bail him out right now after he fumbled that potential double play ball. But Kelly's the first guy here, the last guy to leave. He's been a sponge in this club half. You know, twenty three year old kid living the dream. He used to come to Patriot Games. Grew up 15 minutes away from here. He made the team on the open try on April 12th. He had to pay $40 to try out. He turned that $40 into a two-week paycheck. And they have Mason picked off. Throw to second is going to be in time. He got him. Look, I don't know what Mason is doing right there. Stealing. you got to clear the bottom of the order. I don't know if that was a missed sign or what. But, you know, I, I let Kelly bat right there with men on the corners. But Meso gets caught stealing. So, Ayanaza, we talked about his good pickoff move. And he does pick off Mesa, 1-3-6 if you're scoring at home. Through two, one nothing. Somerset leads. Top of the third we go on SPN.TV at 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. When my son needed a children's hospital, I wanted the best. Leading pediatric specialists, right-size technology, and a campus where they don't just practice medicine, they teach it. A place where nurses set the standard for award-winning care and children are treated as more than just patients. I'm grateful I found everything he needed at Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and the Bristol Myers Squibb Children's Hospital at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Kids are the only specialty. From live sports and event streaming to creative and compelling commercial production, utilizing cutting-edge technology invented and refined over the past decade, Broadcast Menu specializes in guiding New Jersey through the digital age. Our customized, state-of-the-art mobile broadcasting unit allows for a versatile, uninterrupted broadcast to coincide with a crisp, clear picture that can be viewed on your phone, tablet, or Visit Alpine Business Systems at www.alpinebiz.com. Alpine Business Systems, the official IT provider of the Somerset Patriots. For, for comprehensive eye examination, contact Lindsay and eyeglasses on 908-685-0794. That's Pearl Vision in the Somerset Shopping Center. Great work by Mike Lawrence back behind the glass in our CTC headquarters. Great work from our broadcast venue production crew led by... Andrea Lorenzo, Jim Johnson, Andy Slowecki, Josh Booner, our entire crew in the booth just to my left. Thanks to all for joining me here on SPN.TV on this gorgeous Saturday evening. Capacity crowd on hand, literally standing room only. You see people standing in the concourse. That's how packed this place is. They want to see the postseason bound Somerset Patriots in action against the men from the Nutmeg State, the Bridgeport Bluefish. Here's the nine hitter, Mike Richard. Don't get things going. Somerset leads 1-0, top of the third. The difference? Luis Montanez, homer, last half inning. He's 
ninth of the year. Fastball away, count one and oh. Richel, Richards is from Louisiana with the Prairie View A&M. He was on Southern Maryland last year. This year he's on Bridgeport. Richard botched that double play ball potentially last half. It was a move point because Ionazzo picked off base at it. 2-0 count here. Upstairs, down 3-0, and, oh, and Richard has been a thorn in Somerset's side. This year, Richard is 13 for 26 in Somerset pitching. That's a 500 batting average for my quick broadcaster's man. The 3-0. Oh. In for a called strike, count 3-1. and one. Richard's also been playing well, hitting 393 in his last 10 ball games. 5 foot 10, 180 pounder. Shoots one foul behind home plate. And the count runs full, 3 and 2. What well, is the top of the third inning, so it's time for the Nissan scoreboard update brought to you by Nissan Innovations Excites. Choose Nissan.com. Well, York is up on top of Lancaster, 2 0 in the bottom of the third inning. Southern Maryland Sugarland are playing a double header. Sugarland one game one seven five. Game two is ongoing. Crabs lead four to one in the fifth from Waldorf, Maryland. And the Sharks and Ducks are scoreless in the bottom of the second. Richard ends up working a walk. So a leadoff walk issue to Mike Richard. Second time in the first three innings that Richford has the leadoff runner aboard. We've got the World Cup soccer today. What a great game between the Netherlands and Costa Rica. Ended up going to penalties. We are actually watching the end of the game right before we went on the air. Clearly ended at like 6.53. We are on the air by 6.55 on the TV side, 7 o'clock on the radio side. But the Netherlands squeaked by Costa Rica. Argentina won earlier today over Belgium. So your final four in the World Cup is set. It'll be Argentina versus the Netherlands. And then you'll have Germany against Brazil. Brazil obviously... favorite because they're playing in their backyard in Brazil. In for a call strike. Count 0 oh and 2 here to Simmons. Second time for the order. We'll see what adjustments Bridgeport can make. NBA free agency is upon us. Teams with salary cap space are according to the big stars like Dwayne Wayne, Chris Bosh, LeBron James, Pau Gasol, Carmelo Anthony. The 0 2. Just off the play count 1 and 2. Had a couple afternoon baseball games for you earlier today. The Yankees lost just in really excruciating fashion to the Minnesota Twins in 11 innings. 2-1, to one. Francisco Cervelli made an error on the first baseline that propelled the Twins to the victory. The 1-2, swing and a miss, strike three. Got him. That is the fourth strikeout for Matt Langwell through two and a third innings thus far. The Mets trail the Rangers 4-0 in the top of the third inning. The Pirates edge the Phillies 3-2. The Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon was charged with a DWI. He was already suspended from Roger Goodell, and that's not going to help his cause. Of course, Gordon was supposed to be you know, Johnny Manziel's go-to threat the Browns this year. Throw over to check on... Richard, nothing doing. Gets back in time. But we're not at the busiest time of sports. Last month it was extremely busy in sports. July, everything tones down a bit. Really, you just focus on baseball. NFL training camps will get going in a couple weeks. But right now, I guess the talk of the town is Atlantic League Baseball, Major League Baseball. And uh, NBA free agency. The MLB All Stars will be named tomorrow night. Hopefully, the Atlantic League All Stars will be named tomorrow as well. The 1 0 here to Redmond. It's deep left center. Johnny Tucker's going to be there to track it down. Measures it up, makes the catch two away. So, two outs, one on at first base. 1 0 Somerset leads here at the top of the third. Here's Ramon Castro. Castro played in the Mexican League last year. A lot of times between the Mexican League and the Atlantic League. You see players shuffle back and forth between that league. 
But the good news about the Mexican League is that even if you do have a lot of players that go over to the Mexican League, the league ends August 15th. Richards on the move, slider away, throw to second, is going to be not in time. Going to one-hop and go to shallow center field. Kelly unable to pick it. Give Richard a stolen base. So the tying run is in scoring position with two outs. But the Mexican League ends about August 15th. So when the Mexican League ends and the player season's over, you know, they still want to get a paycheck every two weeks. They still want to play the game they love, and that's baseball. So a lot of them come over to the Atlantic League. That's why I say the rosters are, are going to change from you know, July 4th to September 4th. The rosters are going to be totally different. You know, teams restack for the postseason. The 1 0. In for a call strike. Count 1 and 1. So Josh Lowey's playing the Mexican League right now. You could bring Josh Lowey back. Richard runs well over at second. Really up showing Terrace Rotator Cup off to send him home when any ball hits the outfield. Slider just inside. Down two and one here to Ramon Castro. Castro sporting the high dark black socks, baggy gray pants. Looks like he's from the 1930s. Looks like he's Babe Ruth's nephew or something. It'll be a two one here to Castro. Upright stance from the right side. And he hits one to second. Shoot up by Kelly. Slings it over to first in time. Inning over. Two and a half. Somerset leads 1 0. Bottom third we go in the New Talk Radio. 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Be right back. Looking for incredible savings and selection on leading brands of furniture and bedding? Visit Flemington Department Store. Family owned and operated for over 50 years. Our two-acre showroom features the brands you want, all at exceptional values. Flemington's highly trained furniture experts are not on commission, so you can experience a pressure-free and informative shopping experience. Come explore the best-kept secret in New Jersey at the Flemington Department Store on Route 31 in Flemington. Nothing is more important than your child's education. The Somerset County Education Association represents the public school employees that make your child's education possible. This includes more than 7,000 teachers, paraprofessionals, bus drivers, nurses, custodians, secretaries, and other outstanding education support professionals. Visit www.seanj.org for more information. Together, we can prepare our children for the future. Get the guys from IdeaCom on your team by calling today at 877-283-3800. That's one call. They'll save you money. Visit NJ.com, the number one source for news and information about New Jersey and our communities, from our schools to our streets, our city halls, high school sports, and pro sports, small news, big news, New Jersey all the time at NJ.com. Let's pause for 10 seconds. Station identification the Somerset Patriots Baseball or Radio Network. We head to the bottom of the third. Somerset leads 1-0. The difference in this game, Luis Montanez, his team leading ninth home run back in the second. Kelly, Tucker, and Barden are due up 9-1-2 and two in the order. Kelly gets a fresh count because Mason Eck was picked off to end last half inning. First pitch to Kelly is popped up behind home plate. Rodriguez gives it a brief look, but it sips foul. Five rows back. Down 0 and 1 here to Kelly. Kelly says his favorite baseball player, Derek Jeter, favorite pro sports team, the New York Yankees. Low and in, count 1 and 1 here to Kelly. But it seems like whenever Kelly starts, the Somerset Patriots just happen to win ball games. He's made 12 starts. Somerset's 10 and 2 when he starts. So something about this kid that brings a winning attitude to the field. You gotta like it. Low and in, count two and one. Kelly using a two-tone bat. Black barrel, brown handle, the two-one. 
low and in. That's a skip out of the way. Here's back foot. And the count runs to three and one here. Scott Kelly against Matt Ionazzo, a 24-year-old against a 23-year-old. In a grown man's league, round to the third, picked in the short hop by Castro. Oh, that was pretty. Throw across the diamond in time. That was a do-or-die play by Castro, ranging his left in the short hop. I don't even think he was looking at the ball when it was black mid. And he fired it across the diamond in time. One one. Here's Johnny Tucker, who also granted out to Ramon Castro. Castro's been active. He has three assists already for the first two-plus innings of play. Well, in the top of the fifth inning, I'll be joined by Mr. Rod Hirsch. He's the executive director of Operation Shoebox in New Jersey. Soft liner to the third baseline, foul count 0-1. We'll talk with Mr. Hirsch about what Operation Shoebox is all about, how it benefits veterans from overseas, and what this jersey auction is all about. And Operation Shoebox also is sponsoring the post-game fireworks show. And Atlantic League fans are rad. Very prideful for their team. They have a lot of passion. That's what we all love. We go to the different venues across the park. But there's one common de common denominator amongst Atlantic League fans. Because Tucker has a one-two count. It's that they all have a love for fireworks. I've never seen an Atlantic League fan tell me they don't like fireworks. Everybody enjoys a post-game fireworks show. Who wouldn't like fireworks? Swinging a miss. Good change up. But funnels Tucker two away. People ask me if I enjoy the fireworks, and I don't, I don't pay attention to them. I'm doing the post-game show and working on the Twitter, Instagram, and the Facebook. I haven't seen the fireworks here in three years, but every, everybody tells me they're great. And we even show them when we have SPN.TV games. So if, if it brings fans to the ballpark, if a marginal fan going to come to the ballpark because of the fireworks, and I'm all for it. But I, 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 I like them. I just don't have time to pay attention to them. Low and in, count one and oh. But we're expecting our best fireworks show of the year. I can't imagine what the grand finale is going to be. The one oh. Line down the left field line. That's going to get down for a base hit. Quickly cutting this ball off is Almonte. Why? Benetta turned around first, but Martin will hold up right there. So a two out single prolongs the bottom of the third inning for Mike Wilson. Somerset leads one nothing. Two outs. Runner on first. Wilson struck out swinging his first time up. Mike Wilson says his favorite food is Reese's Pieces. He says before every game he has to eat the magical peanut butter cups. And he grounds this one to second. Bobble momentarily by Martinez. He has time. Throws the first inning over. We all eat Reese's Pieces. We all be six foot two, 245 pound blocking muscles. I don't think so, but fortunately for Mike Wilson, he is. We are through three. One nothing. Somerset leads Richport. Top of the fourth we go here on SBN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. What's better than winning Dealer Raiders Dealer of the Year Award? Winning it back to back. That's right. Flemington Car and Truck Country is New Jersey's Dealer Raider Dealer of the Year two years in a row. So thank you to our customers for putting us on top again. Visit DealerRaider.com to read our reviews. Over 1 million satisfied customers can't be wrong. 17 brands, 6,000 vehicles in one location. Flemington Car and Truck Country family of dealerships. Proud to be the better way to buy. Come play with us! BSC has the only four-level fantasy-themed laser tag arena in the country. Drop in for a game or book your next family fun outing and experience the best laser tag in New Jersey. Arcade games for all ages. Win tickets and take home great prizes, just like the Shore. BSC also offers exciting party options in a fun and unique environment. Sports leagues, camps, and child development programs. BSC has something for everyone. Stop by and join the excitement.
Senefes is an integrated global healthcare leader with U.S. headquarters in Bridgewater, New Jersey. We work to really treat the diseases we know about today as well as those we may face tomorrow. Reps Fitness Supply, the ultimate fitness store, wants to pump you up. From treadmills to home gyms, Reps has it all at the guaranteed lowest price. With no money down, no payments or interest for six months, why wait? And experience Reps huge. Five thousand square foot showroom on Route 20 to East in Somerville today. And save. Thanks so much for spending part of your 4th of July weekend with me. Hopefully your propane tank is full of gas, barbecuing in your backyard, watching SPN.TV, streaming some WCTC. We certainly do appreciate all of our listeners. We're a third of the way through this contest. Bridgeport has no runs, a hit, and no air. Summerton has one run, four hits, and no air. The difference in this game is Luis Monson has Homer. J.R. Towns digs in. Towns is one of four strikeout victims for Matt Langwell thus far. First pitch over the top for a strike. Count 0 and 1. Deep breath for Langwell. Kicks delivered. Hit to deep right. Going back is Montanez to the warning track. He tracks it down. He makes the catch. The basket catch for Monty. And there's one away. So Matt Langwell has retired four straights as the leadoff walk is starting to third. This will bring up Louis Lopez. Louis Lopez said his favorite baseball players growing up, he had four of them that he idolized. Edgar Martinez, Ruben Sierra, Roberto Alomar, and Cal Ripken. That's a good foursome right there. In for a call strike count 0 and 1. Edgar Martinez, one of the best, if not the best, designated hitter of all time. Roberto Alomar is one of the best second basemen of all time. You know, the name Cal Ripken, self-explanatory, and then Ruben Sierra. That's big-time hits for the New York Yankees in the late 90s. Part of, part of that Yankee dynasty with Shane Spence. The one one Sierra also played for the Texas Rangers, had a lot of long home runs. It seemed like whenever Sierra would hit a home run, he made a count. I mean, they would be like 500 foot blast. But, uh, you know, you idolize those people, you're going to turn into a good baseball player. That's what... Louis Lopez has become in his 20th year playing pro ball. Swinging a miss, count two and two. 40 years old at a Derby, Connecticut. His favorite pro sports team is the New York Giants. The 2 2 here to Lopez. Foul behind home plate. We'll do it again. And this is a Bridgeport team that's that's very hungry. I mean, they have not made the playoffs since 2010. And, you know, my thinking is, is it time to break up the Bridgeport nucleus? I mean, you've had a lot of guys stay together for quite some time, and you haven't made the playoffs in about five years. The 2-2. Found an inning behind home play. Now they can turn things around very quickly starting on Monday in the second half when everybody starts with a 0-0 zero zero record. And that's the beauty about this Atlantic League. Just because you're 22-46 and 46 right now doesn't mean everything's doom and gloom. Monday you get a clean slate and it's go time. The 2-2 two -two here to Lopez. Popped up foul side of first. Brian Barden near the camera well. Makes the catch. Two outs, nobody on. one nothing. Somerset leads top of the fourth. And this will bring up Denny Almonte. Almonte, the switch hitter, will bat from the left side. Now, this Danny Almonte is not the same Danny Almonte from the 2000 Little League World Series. That Danny Almonte forged his birth certificate, so he could play as a 14-year-old with 12-year-olds. Just simply ironic that he's also a baseball player. But this is the real Danny Almonte. Low and in, yeah, one and one. According to my roster, Danny Almonte was born on... September 24th, 1988, in Miami, Florida. So, I didn't check his birth certificate, but I'm going to believe the roster in front of me. Grounded to second, throw to first, in time, inning over. Bottom four we go. Somerset leads 1 0 in a pitcher's duel. On SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC, WCTCAM.com.
GMB and Genitor Supply, a family owner and business since 1991. Green Seal is certified and a full line of Genitor needs for all your business home cleaning needs. Call us at 732-271-0535 or find us on the web at www.gnbinc.com. Have your next barbecue at the ballpark. Groups of 30 or more can enjoy the game from the picnic area located down the left field line and enjoy the all-you-can-eat barbecue buffet. We do all the work so you can just sit back and relax. Call the Patriots group department at 908-252-0700 to plan your ballpark barbecue today. It's a great weekend to have a barbecue as it is the 4th of July weekend after all. If you're grilling for Joey Chestnut, oh, if you shopped at Costco, that guy can eat a lot. How about 61 hot dogs for Joey Chestnut in 10 minutes yesterday to win his eighth mustard belt? And that wasn't even the highlight of his day. He actually proposed to his longtime girlfriend on Coney Island. So how romantic is that, proposing at a hot dog shack? Here's Corey Smith. Corey Smith takes a first pitch strike. Count 0 and 1. The pride of Piscataway. Grabbing at the third is first time. This could be Corey Smith's last year playing pro ball. Remember, he contemplated retirement last year. Fastball the way 1 and 1. I'm sure he would love to make the all star team if it is his last go around. The way he's playing, he'd probably play at least another five years, but. He and his wife, Gloria, just welcomed their second child this past April. Smitty just turned 32 this past April. And he's had a very successful baseball career. And there was a lot of hype surrounding Corey Smith, and he certainly lived up to it. High chopper to short. Chest high hop for Richard. Throw to first. Good stretch by Lopez in time. One away. You know, when you're, when you're drafted as a first round, first round pick, there's a lot of expectations, a lot of money given to you. And a lot of guys can, you know, flame out and not be successful. Corey Smith, certainly not that case at all. Here's Luis Montanez. His home run is the difference in this game. Summerson leads 1-0 in the bottom of the fourth. One out and nobody on. There's a homer to deep left. His team leading ninth long ball of the season. He's making a late push to be an all-star. Fastball off the plate, count one and one. But Monty hits very well against Bridgeport. 321 hitter with 10 RBI this season against the Fish. The 1 1. Served on the right field line, spinning foul. 1 2 count. Monty from Miami, Florida. He's the guy that says as the weather heats up, so will his bat. This ball once again fouled. Now one and two. Good catch by a fan in attendance. This is Monty's second year in the Atlantic. Swing and a miss, strike three, change up pulled him. So good adjustments made from Matt Ionazzo. Two outs, nobody on. Here comes Ty Wright. He stroked the single in left center field. His first up, first time up. Ty Wright's son and wife actually are here on this 4th of July week. So you always play well when your family's in attendance. Gary Moran's parents were here yesterday, and his wife, Kelly, made it. And he picked up the win. In for a call strike count 0-1. Last year, Jake Fox had three consecutive walk-offs in a row. His parents were in town. You just always play well when your loved ones are by your side. The 0-1. Wright has a hit today. Skips through the legs of Rodriguez. 1-1 one, one count. It'll be a 1-1 one, one here. Chopper in front of Shane Spencer. Now one and two. That is the real Shane Spencer over at third. Not, not the imposter from Albany that we had to deal with last summer. That indeed is the real one. We checked his birth certificate just like Danny Almonte. He is, he is real. The one, two. Two short. Back in it by Richard. Jump. Derek Jeter throw to first. Not nearly in time. It's an infield single for Ty Wright. He's two for two. Speaking of Shane Spencer, he was actually the talk of the Yankees broadcast yesterday. 
know, Brian Roberts yesterday had four extra base hits in a game. It has only been done five times in New York Yankee history since 1975, having four extra base hits in a game. Roberts did it yesterday. Alex Rodriguez did it in 2005. Matsui did it in 2003. Greg Nettles did it in 1976. And Shane Spencer did it in 1998. Pretty cool. Spencer told me in that game he went five for five. Two doubles, a single, and two jacks. Curveball up and away. Count one and oh. Two outs, one nothing. Somerset leads bottom of the fourth. Patriots looking for their fourth straight win here in the month of July. Throw over to check on right. Nothing to it. Donnie up to 292. Four homers, 25 RBI. It's a great year for Adam. Fouled off the mask of Louis Rodriguez, who kind of wobbles around and kind of runs in Adam Donnie. Look, Donnie's a catch. He knows how that feels like. Rodriguez, I think, was just kind of uh, a little overdramatic right there. But look, Adam Donnie's hitting 292. This guy just hit 235 last year. He's hitting about 60 points higher. I mean, what a turnaround. Classy gesture for the home plate umpire, Carlos Guzman, to walk the ball out to Ayanas to buy Rodriguez time. It'll be a 1 1 here to Don. Fastball off the plate, count 2 and 1. Donnie, he just turned 30 years old this past March in his third straight year in Somerset. He's one of the more underrated players, not only in this team, but in the Atlantic League. And I hope he gets all star recognition. Soft ground ball to first, but Lopez will touch it in foul territory. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on first. one nothing. Somerset leads bottom four. Get an update on the York-Lancaster game. Remember, if York wins, they're in the postseason. York leads 2 nothing in the fifth inning. The champagne is on ice at Clipper Magazine Stadium. The 2-2. Up and away, three and two. So now Ty Wright will be going as soon as Matt Ionazzo releases this baseball. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on first. Somerset holding a one nothing advantage. Any ball hit down the line or to the gaps will play right. So he'll be on the move here. He was a lefty pitcher. The three two. Wright's going. The payoff pitch called strike three. Donnie, he knew it. He was looking for another pitch other than a fastball down the middle, apparently. Through four, one nothing. Somerset leads. Top of the fifth, we go on the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Hey, nice to meet you, Mr. Hurd. Good, good. I'm going to have you just scoot a little bit over here. We have a camera right here. So we'll record this half inning here, uh, Mike. Thanks, man. You're doing a great job. But I love Operation Shoebox. You guys do a great job. Is headset on or not? Yes, you do. <laughs> Will I hear you through here? Yeah. The commercials are playing now. You're going to hear me a lot better in a moment. And feel free to talk over plays, too, you know. You, you, you've done this before. So this is going to go for, what, the half inning? Yes. We're do this? Whether the bluefish bat around or whether it's one, two, three inning, we'll make it work. Close game so far. I really haven't been able to watch the game. Because there's... Okay. Welcome back to the Jewel of the Atlantic League. one nothing Somerset leads top of the fifth inning. We'll be the bottom third of the order due up. Rodriguez, Martinez, and Richard. I am Justin Angelo, and joining me is the executive director of Operation Shoebox in New Jersey, sponsoring tonight's fireworks show, and more importantly, sponsoring today's jersey um, auction. Mr. Hirsch, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Justin. Great uh, night for a game. 
uh, tell us a little bit about Operation Shoebox here in New Jersey. Sure. We uh, we got started about 10 years ago. Um, it's a uh, community-based volunteer organization, and uh, we collect uh, donated items, and we put them into care packages, and we ship those care packages overseas to uh, our troops deployed uh, throughout the Mideast and uh uh, also, we're, we're sending some stuff right now to a guy down in the South Pole. Uh, we sent stuff to Navy guys on ships. So uh, in, the, in, in the time that we've been doing this, we've sent about 80,000 care packages overseas. Wow, and, and the players are wearing these great jerseys. Did you, did you design this new red, white, and blue jersey? Yeah, I, uh, I'm really digging on these. Uh, they look great. Um, you know, we're, we're selling uh, chances for people to, uh, to buy them up on the concourse. And... Uh, it's been non-stop since the gates opened up at 6 o'clock. So uh, at the end of the game, the guys will take the jerseys off, down the clubhouse, they'll autograph them, and then they'll come back up to the concourse here, and uh, we'll be pulling numbers, and uh, you know the winners will, uh, will get their jerseys. And there's, uh, I think, 32 of them total we're doing. And this this is Operation Shoebox in New Jersey. It's been around since 2005. How long have you been with the, uh, the Shoebox? Well, I, I started it. Yeah, I started it um, as a marketing program for a newspaper that I used to work for and uh, left the newspaper and, uh, you know, kept it going. And, uh, you know, it, it just continues to gain momentum. I was talking to a lady tonight uh, who's a school teacher uh, at an elementary school in Hillsboro, and uh, come the fall, she's going to have her kids uh, do a collection for us. So uh, we get a lot of those kinds of things. We're working with a lot of corporations, Johnson & Johnson, Jansen. In the fall, we'll be doing a packing with uh, Church & Dwight. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it keeps us busy. We're, we're, uh, well, by the end of the year, we'll, we'll have done about 20 packings with the volunteers. And you're going to a place like Iraq and Afghanistan, I and mean, it's pretty special. I mean, it's got to be warm in your heart. Uh, well, yeah, i got to tell you, I have a, I don't know if you saw him, but we have a gentleman here with us tonight, Lance Corporal Fred D'Alessandro. Uh, 20, he was honored in the second inning. Yeah, he was. Uh, 23-year-old kid, uh, served uh, seven months over in Afghanistan, and uh, just a delight to meet these guys when they come back home. Because, you know, you don't, we're obviously not there delivering the packages, so we're sending them. And we get a lot of nice letters back, we get a lot of nice pictures, uh, but it's not every day that we get to actually meet one of the, uh, the guys. And, uh, you know, Brett, uh, he just exemplifies everything about the men and women that are in the U U.S. military. Uh, just, just great people. Great people. The 2-2 to Rodriguez, granted, there, a good pick by Corey Smith in the short hop, toss across the diamond, one away. Langwell's retired seven straight, one out here, top of the fifth, one nothing. Somerset leads Bridgeport. I'm Justin Antwell. I'm joined by Executive Director of Operation Shoebox here in New Jersey, Rod Hirsch. Rod, is military something in your background? Do you have a lot of people that were involved in the military? Is that why you want to be part of Operation Shoebox? Well, why is this especially you specifically? My, my wife's family, uh, long military history. My grandfather was a dope boy in World War One. My wife's parents met uh, in the Navy during World War II. My mother-in-law was kind of ahead of her time. She was a Navy wave. And uh, they met down at Norfolk Naval Base. My father-in-law went out to the South Pacific and uh, did the island hopping. was off of Iwo Jima on a ship. And uh, when they got back, uh, they got married. Married 64 years. Uh, his brother was in the service. A couple of uh, uncles, nephews. So it, it was that plus uh, shoebox is actually based on my Eagle Scout project. Back uh, in the 60s, uh, I had a lot of friends who were over in Vietnam for my high school. And uh, I had to do a community service for my Eagle Scout badge, and uh, I decided to uh, collect stuff and put them in boxes and send them over to my friends. And uh, Shoebox of today is based on that model from all those years ago. It was a one out double by Juan Martinez, the dead center field. So the tying runs at second base. One out here, one nothing. Somerset leads top of the fifth. Here's Mike Richard, who walked in a full count his first time up. First pitch, they fastball away. Count one and all. It's reading Operation Shoebox to ship more than 73,000 total packages to U.S. military personnel serving in Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, other posts in the Middle East. Make that 73,000 to 32 by the end of the night, right? With these well, 32 jerseys? Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, the number is, is it's, it's up to 80,000. Oh, wow. And that number's a little outdated. And uh, you got to update your Wikipedia page yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's, it, you know, it, it's a challenge to, uh, to keep everything going as a volunteer organization. And sometimes we fall behind on a few things. And one of those things, unfortunately, is our website. Line, um, liner up the middle for a base hit. Rounding third and heading from is Juan Martinez. The throw from Tucker to the plate will be not in time. It's an RBI game time single by Mike Richard. He makes the second and throw. We're tied at one. Let's continue. 
Yeah, uh, I was just watching the play. <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, we're challenged by uh, the expense of sending these boxes overseas. We're very good at getting donations. We're out most weekends at supermarkets collecting. Uh, we have a lot of schools uh, involved in, in collecting uh, civic organizations, churches, that kind of thing. So we have plenty of stuff to put into our boxes. Uh, we just took delivery last week of uh, over 3,000 cases of Girl Scout cookies. Now multiply that by 12. What flavor? Thin mints? Oh, you brought some thin mints. I, well, we can talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, lots of thin mints and every other flavor that they make. So every box that we send overseas has at least two boxes of Girl Scout cookies in it. And then we have uh, the Walgreens stores. We have about 18 of them where the, they're asking their customers to buy candy. So we have tons of candy in our warehouse, and each box that we send over has a load of candy. Uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, pharmaceutical donations from Johnson & Johnson and Janssen. Uh, so all of that stuff goes in the boxes, too. So we're real good at, at getting the stuff into the boxes. But it's the expense of shipping them overseas. We don't get any break from the post office. Um, and in January, there was an increase. Uh, what are so, stamps now? Like 50 cents? It's unbelievable. Yeah, stamps are close to 50 cents. So what they also did was to raise the price of parcel post by about 25%, and that's how we send our boxes. Now, that being said, each box is addressed to a specific individual, and the stuff generally gets to that person within five to seven days. So you do better sending stuff to Afghanistan than you do sending it to California, in truth, you know. So... But as I say, that's why we're here tonight. Um, it, it's a it's a high visibility night. It lets people know that we're still out there, still doing it, that there's still a need, and um, you know we're hoping to, as I say, sell these jerseys and 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 make some money so that we can send more boxes. Simmons strikes out, two outs, tied at one. So we have Prentice Redmond, who's over to a fly out to left and fly out to center. I'm joined by Mr. Rod Hurst, the executive director of Operation Shoebox here in New Jersey. What does it mean to be partnered with the Somerset Patriots, affordable family fund and finance? I'll tell you, I started working with the Patriots when I first started the organization. So I've been working with the Patriots now for 10 years. And, I mean, it's a first-class operation all the way from top to bottom. Um, their, their management... Uh, the front office, the owner, Steve Caliper, uh, the players, everyone has been tremendously supportive of Operation Shoebox New Jersey. And i got to tell you, Sparky Lyle has been right there with us. Uh, and not just during the season, but during the off season, we have fundraisers, and Sparky helps us out. Uh, next week we have a golf tournament. Guess who's playing? Sparky's going to be there, of course. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're going to be doing a packing here at the ballpark on August 9th. And we'll be up on the concourse, and uh, Sparky will be there, along with Brett Jody and a couple of the players, and they're going to be up there packing boxes. So it's an opportunity for volunteers to come out and help us actually pack the boxes that are going overseas. Excellent. 2-1 count here, two outs. Tied at one. Top of the fifth inning. Redmond at the plate. Langwell trying to survive relatively unscathed. Somerset had a 1-0 lead heading into this half inning, but Richard tied it at one. Breaking ball in for a call strike, 2-2, two and, two. and you're sponsoring the fireworks show tonight as well. That should be a, a big extravaganza. We're real excited about it, and I can't tell you how it's, I mean, I'm just, it's a sellout. I mean, we must have 8, over 8 thousand. Is it over 8? Yes. I figured it would be that much. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. I mean, certainly the weather cooperated for us. You know, when you sponsor these outdoor events, you know, you'll, you're taking a shot, and you just never know what's going to happen weather-wise, but... We're blessed tonight. I mean, this is just an absolutely spectacular night. And the, I, the fireworks are going to be phenomenal. They always are, and uh, especially on this weekend. Um, you know, it's just it, it's just the perfect scenario. America looks pretty good for 238 years old, right? Yeah, right. Grounder to short, and it's actually going to be caught on a line drive by Edwin Masonette. Mr. Rod Hurst, thanks so much. My pleasure. The executive director of Operation Shoebox, Rod Hirsch. I am Justin Antwell. We are through four and a half. Head to the bottom of the fifth next. Somerset Patriots face on SPN.TV and 1450. WCTC and WCTCAM.com.
What's better than winning Dealer Raiders Dealer of the Year Award? Winning it back to back. That's right. Flemington Car and Truck Country is New Jersey's Dealer Raider Dealer of the Year two years in a row. So thank you to our customers for putting us on top again. Visit DealerRaider.com to read our reviews. Over 1 million satisfied customers can't be wrong. 17 brands, 6,000 vehicles in one location. Flemington Car and Truck Country family of dealerships. Proud to be the better way to buy. Hi. Hi, sorry, we're closed. What? I sorry. need help with my deposit. The bank has rules. It's really quick. I can't hear you. I promise I'm going to be really quick. I don't under. I can't hear you through the glass. I'll be quick. You'll be quick. That's what you just said? Yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We're closed. You know what? Okay, that's... Hey, sir, I just... Okay. It's time to bank human again. That's why TD Bank has the longest hours and even stays open an extra 10 minutes for when you run late. TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. Health Quest, the official sponsor of the Somerset Patriots Fitness, Sports, Family, Wellness, and Community. Be safe behind the wheel by avoiding the tracks from your control. Don't text or talk on your cell phone while you're driving. It's dangerous against the law. This message brought to you by NJM Auto Insurance. That's NJM Auto Insurance. Well, we head to the bottom of the fifth inning halfway through this contest. We're all evened up at one, so new life for Matt Ionazzo. So great insight and analysis from Mr. Rod Hirsch, Operation Shoebox, one of the finest um, organizations here in the Garden State. So hopefully he's racking up a, a lot of, of money to benefit all the short soldiers serving overseas. Masonette hit the fielder's choice his first time up. Tied at one here in the... Bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch is in for a call strike. Down one one. Edwin's hit safely in six of his last eight games, really playing well. As of late, slider away, count one and one. And this is the guy who's always been more known for his defense than his offense, but it's good to see his offense come alive. Anything you get offensively out of him is gravy. The 1-1. One, one. Low in it. Count 2-1. Two, two days ago, Edwin Mason had a walk-off RBI sacrifice fly. As Somerset won an extra innings over Lancaster. The 2-1. Low in it. Count 3-1. and one. It was the fourth walk-off win for the Somerset Patriots this season. It was their 10th win in their final at that. And they have 24 come-from-behind victories this year. I mean, Somerset has more come-from-behind victories than the Bridgeport Bluefish do total wins. Hit on two ops to third. Back in it by Castro. Slung across the diamond in time. One away. Here's the kid, Kelly. He scrolls to the batter's box. It's a low-scoring game here, tied at one, one out, bottom five, nobody out. These low-scoring games usually do not fare well for Somerset. The Patriots are just 5-19 and 19 when they score three runs or fewer. You feel like if they can just get four runs, you feel confident. So when they score four runs or more, they're 39-4. First pitch to Kelly's up and away, count 1-0. The 24-year-old Ionazzo gets the 23-year-old Scott Kelly. This ball's laced through the left side for a base hit. The kid Kelly continues to rake. He'll stay at first right there, and Kelly has great wheels. He's a pinch-running specialist when he's not starting. So he could be going as he represents the go-ahead run. One-on-one -on -one out, top of the order, starting with Johnny Tucker. Jay Tuck sitting 300 in his last 10 games. 258 hitter overall. No homers, 22 RBI. Tucker's a volunteer coach in the offseason for a Division II program out in the Bay Area. Loves baseball. He was reading a book about Ted Williams in the offseason. Learned the art of hitting. This is a cerebral guy. 
Chopper to third. This could be two. Five, four, three, no. Tucker beats it out. Just a 5 4 fielder's choice. Good wheels by Tucker to bust it down the line. Credit Kelly with a hard takeout slide and break open that double play. And here's Barton, who's one for two. Barton's finally starting to really live up to the hype this, this week. I mean, this is a really talented ball player. But maybe it was just pressing early on, foul behind home plate down 0 and 1. I mean, he had high expectations. One, this guy had 336 in Mexico. Two, he was signed to, signed to replace Nate Spears. And that's a daunting task because Nate was a great player. But maybe Barton was just trying to do a little bit too much early on. Now he's relaxed a little bit, knows his niche knows his role, and he's playing really well, specifically this week. has four ribbies this week, big two-run homer on Tuesday that propelled the Patriots into the playoffs, two RBI double. Yesterday in the 7-5 victory, that two RBI double really was the difference in that two-run ball game. Tied at one, two outs. Grounded a short should in the inning. Richard's going to go the easy way to second. He'll step in the bag himself for the sixth unassisted fielder's choice. If you're scoring at home, inning over. Through five, tied at one. Top of the sixth we go on SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. One run, three hits, no errors for Bridgeport. One run, six hits, no errors for Somerset. We head to the top of the sixth inning, all evened up at one. It will be the following hitters due up for the Bridgeport Bluefish, Castro, Towns, and Lopez. Langwell back out for his sixth inning of work. This is a much better outing for Langwell than his last start, where he gave up six hits in just three innings of work, and he took the loss, a 5 nothing shutout loss against Sugarland. He's only allowed three hits through five innings of play. I am Justin Answell. Thanks so much for joining me. A gorgeous Saturday evening here on SPN.TV. And SPN.TV always brings summer set luck. The Patriots this year are 9-1 and one when SPN.TV broadcast a game. Let's make that 10-1 and one with a good rally late here. So digging in is Ramon Castro right now. Castro is 1 for 2. Hitting just 243 in the season. And the first pitch is a strike. Down 0 and 1. Well, the fireworks show after this one. Tomorrow we got autographs before the game. Remember, tomorrow's game's going to be at 5 o'clock. All games in July and August that are on a Sunday will be at 5 o'clock instead of 1 o'clock. We do this for heat purposes. You don't want to play too many day games in the summer months of July and August. And we'll go back to 1 o'clock Sunday games in September. Found in the right field line. Count 0 and 2. I actually like the 1 o'clock starts personally on Sundays. 
I love the five o'clock starts though during the week. But look, I understand that you know it doesn't help the kids going to camp and people who work nine to five jobs. But selfishly, I'm a big fan of the, the five o'clock starts slider away down one and two. Langwell just has not gotten a lot of run support this year. That's why he has a three and six record with an ERA sub four. That ball is fouled off the stomach of Ramon Castro. Count one and two. Langwell's lost a game four to two. He's lost a game five to one. He's lost a game two one. He's lost a game five nothing. He's lost some low scoring games. And he's in another low scoring game right now. 1 1 the score. Somerset played to their lone run in the bottom of the second. A Montanez solo shot to deep left center. His team leading ninth round tripper of the season. Richport tallied the equalizer in the top of the fifth inning when Richard punched a single up the middle to play our home run. That's where we stand right now. Shopper in the third baseline foul. Here, Willie Upshaw, count one and two. Good day to get some hot dogs. Yesterday we had dollar hot dog days. Today they're regular price, but they're still worth the regular price. The food here at TD Bank Ballpark is, is absolutely tremendous. The one two. Hit the center. Tucker's there to snag it. One away. It's time for a Nissan scoreboard update brought to you by Nissan Innovation and Excites. Choose Nissan.com. Sugarland and Southern Maryland playing a doubleheader. Skiers won game one in Waldorf, seven to five. Game two is in the bottom of the sixth inning. Preds lead that one five to three. Sharks and du uh, Ducks are tied at zero in the fifth. And the big one to keep an eye on. York at Lancaster. The Revs lead 2 0 in the top of the seventh inning. If the Revs win, they're in the postseason and clinch a Freedom Division first half title. So then we'd have two of our four playoff teams set. It would be York and Somerset. And we'd have to wait about three months till mid September to find out who the other two teams are of the other six, fighting it out for a slot. The 0 1 here to Dallas. Swing and miss, Count Owen. So the only way the Stormers can make the playoffs, the Stormers have to come from behind today. They have to win tomorrow. And then Lancaster would have to win game one of the doubleheader on July 30th against Somerset, part of a makeup in the first half. And then Lancaster's in the postseason. The 0 2. Up and in, Count 1 and 2 here to Dallas. The Yankees lost 2 1 in 11 innings. The Phillies lost the Pirates. Three to two. The Rangers lead the Mets five to three in the fifth from City Field. How about that trade the A's made yesterday, acquiring not only Jason Hamill but Jeff Samarja for a couple prospects. So Billy Bean's really going all in this year. The A's have a great team in the American League. It's really a two horse race between the A's and the Tigers for the best team in the American League. Swinging a miss. Strike three. Towels down. Swinging. Two outs, nobody on base. 1-1 one, one the score top of the sixth. And, of course, we can't forget about World Cup soccer going on. The final four in the World Cup is set. The Netherlands will play Argentina in one match. Another match on the pitch will be Germany versus Brazil. The Dutch survived against Costa Rica in PKs earlier today. And Argentina survived against Belgium. Liner to short, caught by Masonette, inning over. Langwell's been efficient. Bottom six, we go tied at one. On SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. You may have seen this different looking outlet in your home. It's called a ground fault circuit interrupter outlet, or GFCI. Typically, you'll find them in your bathrooms, kitchen, laundry room, garage and outdoor locations where you have access to water. Their function is to protect you from an electrical shock, because as you probably know, water and electricity are a deadly combination. Let's say an item, like a hair dryer, is plugged into a GFCI outlet, and that item comes into contact with water. The combination of electricity and water will trip the GFCI off in as little as a 40th of a second, saving you from certain disaster. If a GFCI outlet repeatedly trips, chances are it's old or it's faulty. Discontinue use of the outlet and have it replaced. If you're unsure if your GFCI outlets are working properly, 
give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out. Thomas Espoto Roofing LLC is your local roofing experts proudly serving Somerset County. Call today at 732-560-8311 or visit us online at thomasbottoroofing.com. Attention Patriot fans, Bridgewater Diners is a proud sponsor of Somerset Patriots Baseball located at 1244 Route 22 in Bridgewater. It's just a foul ball away from the ballpark. Bridgewater Diners is a great place to meet and eat. Stop by the Bridgewater Diner before the game and enjoy great food and company. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We're all evened up at one. Inazzo's back out for a sixth inning of work. Langwell's at 104 pitches for six innings of work. There's nobody warming up in the Somerset bullpen, so it looks like Matt will come back out for the seventh when we get there. Here's Big Mike Wilson. Big Mike hitting 299 in the season, three homers, 11 RBI. First pitch is low and in. And we'll want to know. It's the third time for the order. We'll see what adjustments Somerset can make against Zion Wilson swung on and missed. Down one and one. Wilson began the year in AAA Louisville with the Reds organization. Last year he was with Somerset and then was promoted to AAA with the Padres organization. Low and in. Down two and one. Somerset's glad to have a guy like Mike Wilson around. Because Mike Wilson, not only is a great player himself, he makes other people in the lineup better. Broken back grounder to second. Light toss over to first from Martinez to Lopez, and there's one away. Inaz has been very economical. He is just at 75 pitches to five and a third innings of play. But Corey Smith told me that pitchers pitch Mike Wilson very similar to how they pitch him. So the fact that Corey Smith hits behind Mike Wilson, that's an advantage for Corey Smith. Here's Big Smitty. In for a call strike going on. Corey Smith, of course, the pride of Piscataway. He says his favorite restaurant in the Garden State is 25 Burger. That is a great place. The 0-1. Fastball away, count one and one. Probably the only negative about 25 burgers is you actually have to order the fries separately. The burger doesn't come with fries. Round and two short, backhanded by Richard, and he bobbles it. That's going to be an infield single. I would at least hope so. We'll see how they officially score it. I mean, Richard had to range to his right. Yep, it is a hit. One on, one out. Tied at one, bottom six. And here comes Luis Montanez, who's responsible for the lone run of the Somerset Patriots. He clubbed his ninth home run of the season back in the second. Fouled on top of the sweet level above me. Count 0 and 1. Here to Luis Montanez. Monty is a very clutch player. He's had some big time hits the last two years wearing the red, white, and blue. The 0 1. Then he lines this one through the left side for a base hit. Right on cue. Two on, one out. Somerset set up as they have the go ahead run and scoring position. And they have a batter that's two for two today in Ty Wright coming to the plate. Thank you. 
So Wright digs in the big spot right here. Ty Wright hits 297 with runners in scoring position. Just 223 overall, though. And he punches this one to right field. A lot of hang time for Redmond at Camp Under. He's going to make the catch. Corey Smith's going to tag from second. He's going to make it to third standing up. Wow. I didn't think Smitty would tag on that ball. Wasn't it too deep? Two away. So a mildly productive out for Ty Wright. Then in the corners, two outs. Tied at one, bottom six. And here comes Adam Donahue. Well, Donnie can really cement his all-star selection with a big-time hit here. That's if he gets voted into the all-star game, but he's pretty much a slam dunk at this point. Then on the corners. Chopper down the first baseline foul. Down 0-1 here to Big Don. Don's had some big-time hits. He has two game-winning hits and extra innings this season. And Somerset would love to grab the lead right here, because if, when they lead after six innings, they're 38-2. and two. Fastball inside. one one counter to Donahue. Smith on third, Monty on first. Tied at one, bottom six. Grover checking the trail runner, Montanez, nothing doing. Don has singled to center, and he's also struck out looking at a full count. This capacity, credible for 8,000, is getting into it. The 1-1, one, one, low and in. Count 2-1 and one here to Adam Donahue. Donnie hitting 289, four homers, 25 RBI. I love RBI number 26 right about now. Punched over from the right side, lefty pitcher, righty batter. The 2 1. Hit the deep left. Going back is El Monte. Warning track. Wall. That ball is gone. Oh, go ahead. Three run homer for Donnie Baseball. Just like that, the Patriots are back in front. They lead 4 to 1 here in the sixth. Send this guy to Texas! Oh my goodness! What a great hitter! Big Dime! Get him to the All Star game! Get him on Southwest right now! All, all that needs to be decided is he won a window seat or an aisle seat? Uh, he is going to the All-Star game. Donnie's got long legs, so let's give him, let's give him an aisle seat on the Southwest flight for the July 16th game in Texas. Oh, my. Meso slaps one foul in the right field line. Count one and one. Watch three run homer put Somerset in front. Four to one. In the sixth inning. From Adam Donahue. And this ball's lined in the left field line. Foul out right. One two Kenner to Masonette. Send Donnie to Texas. Donnie now has five home runs. His goal was to hit nine. He's more than halfway there. Granted, off the chest of Castro, and that'll be an E5. E5 on the third baseman right there. Mason, that's going to reach on the air. That error prolongs the inning for the nine hitter Scott Kelly. And what this does, it's able to clear the bottom of the order. That's presumably Mason that does not get picked off like he did in the second.
One oh can here to Scott Kelly. They're over to check on Mason. They want to pick him off again. Four one Somerset leads bottom six. So now you feel good. Somerset is thirty eight and two when they lead after six innings. They're going to have the lead after six innings, no matter what Kelly does right here. Somerset's up four one. Upstairs, count two and zero. Oh. Popped up, foul side of first, giving a brief look as Lopez in the pitcher, but it goes foul, five rows back. Down two and one. Two one candidate to the Kid Kelly. Shoots this one through the right side for a base hit. The first career multi-hit professional baseball game for Scott Kelly. Two on, two out. How about the kid, Kelly? This kid can handle a wooden stick. And Somerset, look, I said third time for the order they would make adjustments, and they certainly have right here. Now it's the fourth time for the order. It's just going to prompt a mound visit from the pitching coach, Pat Ahern. Let's pause for 10 seconds. Station identification on the Somerset Patriots Baseball Radio Network. Two outs, two on, 4 1. Somerset leads Bridgeport here in game two of this three game set. Somerset looking to clinch the series, looking to win their fourth in a row, looking to expand their high water mark of. 22 games above 500 as Ahern meets with the entire defense. This inning should be over if Castro had just fueled that ball cleanly. Hit off the bat of Masonette. Here comes Tucker. In for a called strike. Down 0 and 1. Tucker's 0 for 3. Ground out. Strike out. Fielder's choice. Sitting at 22 ribbies in the season. Fastball runs too far inside. Down 1 and 1. Tucker had a great month of June where he hit 300. Looking to carry that over into the month of July. It'll be a 1 1. Serving to shallow center field. going to get out for a base hit. Rounding third and heading for home is Edwin Masonette. The throw from Simmons will not nearly be in time. It's an RBI single for the straw that stirs this great Johnny Tucker. Somerset expands their lead to 5-1 to one here in the sixth. This capacity crowd's getting into it. And now the Patriots have officially batted around. 23rd RBI of the season for Tucker. So Meso scores, Kelly stops at second. And here comes Brian Barton, who's the only hitter not to have batted in this inning until now. Somerset's looking for their ninth straight win against Bridgeport. Fastball out and away, count 1-0. The 1 0 here to Barton. Swing and a miss with a fastball by him. Down 1 and 1. There is a righty warming up in the Bluefish bullpen. Kelly on second, Tucker on first. Great speed. Both have singled. Barty at the plate. And he strokes this one to left field. It's going to be trapped by Denny Almonte. Rounding third and heading for home is Scott Kelly. The throws up the first baseline. It's an RBI single by Brian Barden. The third straight hit for the Somerset Patriots in the scream. And they've broken it open as they lead 6-1 to one here in the sixth. Some timely two-out hitting, hitting right here. Singles by Tucker, Kelly, Barden, all with two outs. Lead to a couple insurance runs. 
So Tucker's at second. Kelly has scored. And this will bring up Mike Wilson, who started this inning with a broken back grounder to second. And here comes Willie Upshaw. He's going to take a long stroll out to the mound. He's going to yank Matt Ionazzo out of this game. 6-1 Somerset leads. Two outs, bottom six, two on. Wilson at the plate. We'll step aside for 60 seconds right here on WCTC and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Welcome back to TD Bank Ballpark. 6-1 Somerset leads two outs, runners on first and second. Mike Wilson at the plate, and the new pitcher in this game is going to be number 22, Kyle McMillan at Kent State University. 6'2", 200-pounder from Norwalk, Connecticut. has peaked at the high A level with the Chicago White Sox organization. Numbers for Kyle McMillan on the season are as follows. 0-1, 6.30 ERA, 10 games, 10 innings pitch, 8 Strikeouts, eight walks, opponents hitting 289 against Kyle McMillan. Got at Kent State, the Golden Flashes, to their only College World Series appearance in the school's history back in 2011. So McMillan's warming up. Mike Wilson will get things going. Let's recap this sixth inning for you. It was 1-1 heading into the bottom of the sixth inning. Wilson would ground out to second base. Then Corey Smith would single. To shortstop. Luis Montanez then singled to the left side. Ty Wright flew out to right field. Smitty tagged from second and moved to third. So he had been on the corners two outs. And then this is when the epic two out rally started. A three run home run from Adam Donahue. An E5 by the third baseman, Ramon Castro, hit off the bat of Mason. Ed. A single by Kelly to the right side, an RBI single up the middle by Tucker, an RBI single to the shallow left by Brian Barton. Has allowed Somerset to take a comfortable 6-1 to one lead as the fans are doing YMCA here at the concourse. So McMillan has thrown his eight warm-up pitches. We're just about ready to continue the action here. Glad to have Mike Lawrence back behind the glass in our CTC headquarters. Thanks to our great broadcast menu production crew led by Andy Slowecki, Pat McManus, Andrew Lorenzo, Chip Johnson, Josh Buda, Rick Guile, Evan Moore, and so many more. Fastball inside, count one. And now I am Justin Ansel, live from the Porta.com press box. 1 0 Canada to Big Mike. The second at bat of this inning. Now it's a 1 1 count. Force anywhere except home. Good speed of the bases with Tucker on first and Barton on Tucker on second, Barton on first. So many base runners losing track. The 1 1 inside almost nicked the baggy jersey of Mike Wilson. Down 2 and 1. In for a call strike, count two and two. But I think Adam Donahue has submitted his trip to Texas. Matt Zielinski almost threw a no-hitter into the sixth inning. In his last start, he deserved the trip to Texas. And Hunton has submitted his trip to Texas, leading the Atlantic League in saves. Swinging a miss, strike three. Inning over. But the damage was certainly done. Five runs for the Somerset Patriots, all with two outs. Somerset leads 6-1 to one through 6. Top 7 we go on SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com.
Six to one, Somerset leads top of the seventh. We go one run, three hits, one error for Bridgeport. Six runs, twelve hits, no errors for the Patriots. I thought Matt Langwell may continue to pitch into the seventh inning, but that spot of the sixth inning took so long as five runs scored and ten batters came to the plate. I think Jody said, Matt, we've seen enough. He did a great job only allowing one run and three hits and six innings to work. A quality start for Matt Langwell would be in line for his fourth win of the season. He leaves after 104 pitches. And he'll pass the baton to the southpaw, Daniel Herrera. Five foot six, 165 pounder from Odessa, Texas, 29 years old. Numbers for Danny Herrera on the season 1 0, 2.25 ERA. 12 games, 12 innings pitched, 12 Ks, no walks. Opponent hitting 250 against the ex big leader with the Brewers, Reds, and Mets. He will face the following hitters El Monte, Rodriguez, and Martinez. Somerset leads 6 to 1. They scored five runs last half inning, highlighted by a three run homer from Adam Donahue. Certainly making his case for the All Star game at the All Stars will be announced within the next 24 to 48 hours. In for a called strike count 0 and 1. Swing and a miss. Count 0 and 2. I mean, more than this guy hit 235 last year, Adam Donnie. He's hitting now 300. He had six homers all of last year. He has five already. We're not even at the All Star break. The 0 2. Upstairs count 1 and 2. And Donnie, he only drove in 40 RBI last year. He now has 28 ribbies with 72 games to go. Liner in the shallow left field is going to drop for a base in. So leadoff base knock here for Denny Almonte to start the seventh for the Bridgeport Bluefish. One on, nobody out. Here's Louis Rodriguez, who's 0 for 2, a fly to the ground now. Well, you know Somerset scored at least four runs because they lead 6-1 to one right now. You have to feel good about that as the Patriots this season are 39-4 and four when they score at least four runs. I mean, with this pitching staff, if you give this team four runs to work with, you should be good as gold. That's been the case in formula this year. Swing and a miss. Down 0-1. I'm trying to decide who to bring up for the postgame show. A lot of good candidates. Langwell, Donahue, Scott Kelly. The O-1. Ran to the third baseline, just foul. Down 0-2. The bullpen catcher for the Somerset Patriots is Charlie Leone. Now, he is active. If Somerset grabs a comfortable lead, Brett Jody told me he would not be afraid to let the bullpen catcher back. With Aaron Eggleston being out this weekend for a wedding, it allowed a roster spot to be vacant for the bullpen catcher. Grab her back to the pitcher. One, six, three, double play. Oh, Herrera feels his position nicely. Good turn up the middle by Mason Ed to askew the takeout slide from El Monte. So quickly, two outs, nobody on. 6 1 Somerset leads top of the seventh. And here comes the one and only Juan Martinez. Martinez has scored the lone bluefish run this game. Long set from Denny Herrera. Deals a strike, count 0 and 1. Herrera drafted for the 45th round by the Texas Rangers way back in 2006. He went to the University of New Mexico, did Herrera. Played for the Lobos down the Mountain West. The best athlete to ever come out of the University of New Mexico. Daniel Herrera is one of them, but it's got to be Brian Erlacher, the All-American former linebacker on the Chicago Bears, who's now an analyst on Fox Sports 1. But New Mexico, great, great school in Albuquerque, the state capital. They had the balloon fiesta there every October. Basketball away, count two and one. But you got to like Danny Herrera, man. I mean, he's five foot six, 165 pounds. He's playing with Giants, and this guy... 
is doing an awesome oh job. Oh Foul behind home plate, two and two. He says when he was in the big leagues, the best players he ever struck out were guys like Prince Fielder and Ryan Howard. I mean, he was in the big leagues because he was a lefty specialist. He could get out the big lefties in the middle lineup. Guys like a Prince Fielder, a Ryan Howard, a Chase Utley. The 2-2. Two -two. Smoked in the left. It's going to get out for a base. Hit. So I'm big with that double play now. So bring up the 9 hitter, Mike Richard. He's one for one with an RBI on a walk. Last call for the Tricky Trey Raffle for anybody in attendance that wants to bid on these jerseys here. Somerset's wearing these special Stars and Stripes jerseys. As all proceeds will benefit Operation Shoebox to help veterans overseas. Foul behind home plate, count 0 and 1. So help out our good friend Rod Hirsch and his organization by placing a bid. You'll, you'll get a great jersey. Maybe a bit sweaty after the game, but you still get the jersey. You should probably bid it up on a player who's not going to pitch today, like a starting pitcher like Eric Garnison or Gary Moran, Matt Zielinski. Those would those be the type of people that I would go for. You know those jerseys are going to be sweat-free. I mean, those guys can't be sweating if they're not playing. It's not that hot outside. But you probably don't want to bid on Adam Donahue's jersey. He's probably soaked in sweat. He's the catcher after. Although maybe you do want to bid on his jersey because he's the hottest hitter on the planet. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Scoreless frame from Herrera. Get up and stretch your extremities if you are watching or listening on your couch at home. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Six to one. Somerset leads Bridgeport on SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Are you ready for some family fun? Have a ball with everyone. It's a slam in here. Come on, get patriotic. Don't miss great baseball, food, games, giveaways, and more with the Somerset Patriots. It's fun, affordable, and close by at TD Bank Ballpark in Bridgewater. So round up the kids and grab your cap and your glove. It's a slam in here. Come on, get patriotic. I got a 12-game mini plan. I mean, it's it's big, but it's a mini plan, but this is big. Same seat, your seat, all 12 games. Sparky promise. You can choose fireworks. Or any 12 games. It's up to you. You miss a game? It doesn't matter. You can exchange them for any other game. Anytime. And with the mini plan, one of the cool things, you can take batting practice on the field. He can't hit. With all of that, what are you waiting for? Get it today, right? Today. Wellman Home Services, plumbing, heating, electric, and air since 1962. Open seven days a week, 24-hour service. WellmanHomeServices.com is the website. The phone number is 888-WELLMAN. From live event streaming to Graven and Cavelli commercial production, broadcast venue specialized in the guy in New Jersey through the digital age, sports entertainment, a whole new level broadcast venue, the official broadcast provider of the Somerset Patriots. Well, we head into the bottom of the seventh. As fans are doing the Cotton Eye Joe in the aisles and in the concourse here at TD Bank Ballpark. Somerset holds a comfortable 6-1 to one lead. It will be Smith, Monty, and Wright due up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Somerset's looking for their fourth consecutive victory. Kyle McMillan still in the pitch. Somerset really broke this game open in the sixth, and they sent ten batters to the plate. And tallied six hits in that inning, six hits and five runs. Corey Smith will dig in. Four of his six homers have come against Bridgeport. End of his 40 RBI coming against Bridgeport. Hits this one a deep left. There it goes. It is gone. Oh, he continues to annihilate Bridgeport pitching. Right 
on cue, getting Smitty with it. His fifth homer against Bridgeport and his seventh round trip. Wow, Patriots lead 7-1 to one here in the seventh. He just owns the blue fan. Fantastic. And it's funny because Corey Smith joined me in the postgame show a couple weeks ago. I said, what is it about Bridgeport that makes you hit so well? He said, you know what, Justin? I've been playing this game for a long time, and every year I always have that one team where I do really well against. You know, I do solid against other teams as well, but my numbers are usually off the charts against one specific team. It's very random on who that team would be. And this year, it just, you know, rolled the dice. It happens to be Bridgeport. Last year for Corey Smith, it was Long Island. Liner to second, and they're going to say trap it. Throw to first. It's still in time. Monty's out. And there's one away. Wow. Three homers in this game for Somerset. Solo shots from Smith and Monty, and a three run homer from Donahue. They also have RBI hits from Tucker and Barton. That's how they. Accounted for all seven of their runs. Two O Kenner to tie right. It's almost like these guys just have like watch they they watch SP and that team or they're listening to CTC right in the batter's box. The 2 0. Swing and a miss, down two and one. But he literally just owns Bridgeport. He maybe isn't the pride of Piscato, he's the pride of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Two one. Low in it. Down three and one. He's just a fish killer. And I understand, you know, you maybe you own a certain team. But, I mean, these numbers he's putting up against Bridgeport are just off the charts amazing. As Ty Wright works a one out walk. Now, Willie Upshaw just cannot wait till Monday when everybody starts with a 0 and 0 record in the second half, I'll tell you that. I want to thank Mr. Mark Langwell for checking in. He's enjoying the broadcast. Well, thanks for raising Matt Langwell. He's the winning pitcher in this one. But it's a two-way street, Mr. Langwell. Thanks for, for checking in online. That great start for Matt. I mean, he had pitched very well. I mean, you look at Matt's record, three and six, as this ball is found in the right field line. It will go four and six, and you're like, yeah, it's, it's not that great. But anybody who's watched or listened to ball games knows that Matt Langle has pitched a lot better than that record. I mean, Jody and Dom will even tell you that's why he's still in the rotation because he's, he was in the big leagues just last year. This guy has great stuff. He just hasn't got a lot of run support. Sometimes maybe he'll give up one big hit that will ultimately cost him. Because Donnie, he strikes out two of them. But it was good to see Matt Langwell. Pitch to a low scoring game early on and end up getting a victory. Here's Masonette. Masonette is 0 for 3 with a run scored. Seven runs on 13 hits for Somerset, one run on just five hits for Bridgeport. I want Charlie Leone, the bullpen catcher, to get back. That's what I'm waiting for. Found him in any behind home play count 0 1. You gotta like the bullpen catcher to get back. I mean, that's a great story. Hopefully it happens. But the bullpen catcher, really the unsung hero of the team, does a lot of work, doesn't get a lot of recognition. But he's a very integral part of the squad. And I think he definitely deserves it back. I'm a huge Charlie Leone fan. After all, this guy's a volunteer firefighter in South Plainfield. He saves people's lives in his free time. Shows up real early, leaves real late. It'll be an O2. 
popped up into the infield. Calling everybody off will be the second baseman, Juan Martinez. He makes the catch inning over. Somerset adds a run to Homer. 7-1, they lead through 7. Top of the 8th we go on the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. The gold standard in healthcare. Morristown Medical Center. Top 50 hospital in the nation. U.S. News and World Report. Ranked number one hospital by New Jersey doctors. Inside Jersey Magazine. Hospital of the Year. NJ Biz. Morristown Medical Center. The gold standard in healthcare. Winning. Extreme winning. Winning. Extreme winning. Play the New Jersey Lottery X games and multiply your cash prize 5, 10, 20, even 50 times with a top prize of $1 million. Now that's extreme winning. Get your tickets today and give your dreams a chance. Wherever you go from coast to coast, there's a super cut to give you a cut that rocks. We have over 2,000 locations. All day can make you feel like a rock when you walk out that door. Check out supercuts.com to find your nearest super ups location to rock the cut wherever you want. Super cuts, a cut above the rest. True Associates, sponsor the lawn scene area at the ballpark. At True Associates, you'll find more than a wide variety of competitive insurance products. You'll find people understand your needs. True Associates, a team of licensed professionals who care about their clients. Well, we head to the top of the eighth inning. Bridgeport's down to their final two innings as they trail 7-1. to one. Top of the order, two up for the fish. Simmons, Redmond, and Castro, and they'll face the outstanding eighth inning setup man, Jason Lowey. 5'11", 29-year-old, 185 pounds from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Numbers in the season. Let me get my magnifying glass out because they are very, very microscopic. Uh, there we go. I see them. 4-0, 1.75 ERA, 26 innings pitch, 25.2 innings log, 29 Ks, 8 walks, opponents hitting 159 against Jason Lowey. Send this guy to Texas as well while you're at it. I mean, to me, you know, maybe there should be six guys going to Texas. Montanez, Hunton, Lowey, and then uh, three slam dunks easily. Zelensky, Donahue, and Smith. I'll be extremely disappointed if all six of them are not on the All-Star. And there are even other candidates as well, but, you know, I understand with the new format of the entire Skeeter team making one squad and 25 guys can be 175 slots. You can't take everybody on some. So. The one swing and a miss, count one and one. So, I mean, that's my prediction. I'm predicting six All-Stars for Somerset whenever it gets announced, whether it be tomorrow or Monday, whenever the league offices tallies the totals, push ops and some of the picks the pitchers. Corey Donald is actually going to the All-Star game as well. He'll be the pitching coach of the All-Star game. Stan Hilburn will be the hitting instructor. He's the Lancaster hitting instructor. Foul behind home plate, count one and two. So congrats also to Corey Donald going to the All-Star game. Very well deserved for the outstanding second-year pitching coach, Corey Donald. Glad he is going to represent the red, white, and blue in Texas. And the All-Star game, it's a lot of fun. There'll be scouts there. You get cool merchandise, I'm sure. Stay at a nice Marriott Hotel in downtown Sugarland. There's lots of restaurants to eat at. Foul behind all play. So it's more than just a game. It's all experience. One two count here, nobody on, nobody out. Seven one Somerset leads here in the top of the eighth inning. Breaking ball swung on a miss strike three. Simmons K's for the third time this evening. It's been a no contact game for Simmons. Three K's in a walk. Here's Redmond. I mean, Somerset just continues to roll. The Patriots right now are making winning seem way too easy. It's not supposed to be like this. The 
And I was talking with Brett Jody after the team clinch this past week, and I said, you know, how are you going to change as manager now that the playoffs don't begin until September 24th, and it's only July 5th right now? He said, you know what, Justin? We're still going to try and compete and win every ball game. Nobody's going to give away at bats. Everybody's going to play for this organization. Everybody's going to play for their own personal pride. Everybody's going to play for their own stats. Everybody wants to get promoted. But I am going to manage a little bit differently. One hopper to third. Love by Corey Smith. Wrote a first in time to him. He said, I'm not going to push players in the second half. You know, if a guy has a nagging hamstring injury, I'm not going to make him play through it. He may not use John Hunt in three games in a row. He's not going to use Josh Lowey three games in a row. You know, if Eric Arneson's at 97 pitches through eight innings, is he going to bring him out for the ninth inning on August 13th against the Camden River Sharks? No, he's not. You don't need to. That's the luxury. You can give Scott Kelly more playing time and Corey Harrell check more playing time. Serve him to right field get out for a base hit. Two out knock for Castro for a long field. 7-1 Somerset leads two outs top seven. This will bring up the cleanup hitter, Taos. So two Ks, same with her that flies right. But he did say he is going to manage differently. And I thought that was a good answer. Because any coach that, that will tell you that he's going to manage the save in the first half and the second half after you win the title in the first half can't be telling the truth. But Jody's an awesome skipper. He deserves all the respect in the world. And I love his style of management. He aggressive hitting runs, the safety squeezes. Keeps things loose in the clubhouse. It's tough to fill the void that Sparky Lyle left behind, let me tell you. But if there was one man for the job, it was Brett Jody. He's a family guy. Shane Spencer's done a fantastic job. Corey Donnelly already talked about him. John Hunt and the architect of the team. You really have to be pleased. There's some high character guys in that clubhouse who deserve success. This team's about to go 22 games above 500. Remarkable. The 0 1. Grand to third should end the inning, and it does. 5 4 Fielder's Choice ends it. Bottom of the eighth we go. Somerset holding a 7 1 lead on SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. BRB. Everybody loves coupons. Now you can save money every day. Watch your mailbox for the big red, white, and blue money mailer envelope. Inside, you'll find valuable coupons to save lots of money on things you use every day. In the money mailer envelope, you'll find savings from your favorite local restaurants, plus savings on auto care and home repairs. Save on picture framing, house cleaning, hair care, tanning, massage, eye care, and more. There are even more money-saving coupons online. Visit MoneyMailer.com. Start saving now. To advertise, call 1-800-MAILER-1. 1-800-MAILER-1. Looking for incredible savings and selection on leading brands of furniture and bedding? Visit Flemington Department Store, family owned and operated for over 50 years. Our two-acre showroom features the brands you want, all at exceptional values. Flemington's highly trained furniture experts are not on commission, so you can experience a pressure-free and informative shopping experience. Come explore the best-kept secret in New Jersey at the Flemington Department Store on Route 31 in Flemington. PNC is proud to support the Somerset Patriots. Stop by your local PNC branch or visit us at PNC.com to see how we can help you achieve PNC for the Achiever and you. PNC Bank, National Association, member FDIC. Somerset County Education Association supports the outstanding public school employees and make your child's education possible. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Somerset leads 7 to 1. It will be Kelly, Tucker, and Barton do up. 9, 1, and 2 in the order. If you're tuning in via SPN.TV, we certainly do appreciate it. We do apologize for the lack of zoom ins and the lack of variety of different camera angles. Uh, we've lost control of some of our camera angles, so we're going to tread water and do the best we can. Looks great to me. I didn't even know the difference. But um, that is the reason for the lack of zoom ins uh, and, sort and such. 
But I am Justin Anvil saying hello from the Fullerton.com press box. Still pondering about who I want to talk to on the post-game show. I got three candidates in mind. Matt Langwell, Adam Donnie, and Scott Kelly. If Scott Kelly gets a hit right here, uh, we may bring him up. That's three hits for him. If the bullpen catcher, Charlie Leon, gets in at bat and he gets a hit, well, then we're definitely bringing him up no matter what. So that's basically what I'm thinking about these next uh, 15 minutes or so. Scott Kelly's going to bat right now. He's two for three. Tennis tonight was announced 8,153, so clap it up if you're here at the ballpark and you're proud to be a Patriot fan. That is a season high. Previously, the season best was 8,012 on June 21st, but 8,153 fans at the ballpark, that is tremendous. Got a new pitcher in the game. It's going to be Joe Bateman, 6'185 pound righty at a UMass Amherst. Peak of the AAA level. Kelly's average up to 196. Takes a strike, count 0 and 2 to get Kelly. Congrats to Scott Kelly, his first professional multi hit game. The 0 2. And this ball is hit to deep left field. Going back is El Monte to the warning track. He makes the catch. One away. There's no 3 hit game for Kelly. He's still in my mix to possibly be on the post game show. Here's Tucker, who is one for four with an RBI. Every single Patriot has a hit except for Mason Ed and Wilson, seven of the nine. That's getting some quality depth in the lineup. Oh, one can't do to Tucker. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth inning, the Bluefish would send up Lopez, Almonte, and Rodriguez. They want to mount an epic rally. Looks like Mike Mark is warming up in the pin deep down the right field line. Can't quite see from down 0 2 here at Tucker. It's hard to look across this capacity crowd of 8,153. But I do believe that is Mike DeMar. If I'm wrong, it won't be the first time. The 0-2. Hit the deep right. Going back is Redmond to the warning track. He tracks it down and makes the catch. Two away. And this will bring up Brian Barton, who's two for four. Oh, no. Charlie Leone, the bullpen catcher, is getting it at that. Oh my goodness! The bullpen catcher, 27 years old from South Plainfield, New Jersey, Charlie Owen is getting it at bat. He's going to pinch hit for Brian Barton. Swing and a miss, count 0 and 1. Leone has been the bullpen catcher the last two years. Last year he got three at bats after Somerset clinched a wild card bird. And he went 0 for 3. The 0 1. Foul tip in the mini, count 0 and 2. Leon's a volunteer firefighter in South Plainfield. He says his favorite food is pizza. He used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods. The 0 2. Foul tip into the netting behind home plate. He got a piece of it. And the entire Patriots dugout is in the top step of a 7 1 ball game. The bottom eight thing with two outs and nobody on. Because the bullpen catcher is getting it back. It'll be an 0-2 to Leon. The pitch. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. The first baseman, J.B. Torres. Strike three for Charlotte Leon, who's 0 for 4 in his professional baseball tenure. Well, we are through 8-7-1. Somerset leads. Way to the top of the ninth next on SPN.TV at 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Hey, do you know where Dean from Fullerton is? <laughs>
View our full inventory of new Ford cars and trucks online at Fullerton.com. When my son needed a children's hospital, I wanted the best. Leading pediatric specialists, right-size technology, and a campus where they don't just practice medicine, they teach it. A place where nurses set the standard for award-winning care and children are treated as more than just patients. I'm grateful I found everything he needed at Rutgers Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and the Bristol Myers Squibb Children's Hospital at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Kids are their only specialty. Welcome back to TD Bank Ballpark, crowd of 8,153, screaming for T-shirts. They're also screaming against the Somerset Patriots, lead 7-1 in the top of the ninth inning. With the following hitters, two up, Lopez, Almonte, and Rodriguez, 5-6-7 in the order. And the new pitch for the Somerset Patriots is going to be the righty Mike DeMar, 6-foot, 195-pounder from Tolleson, Arizona, 31 years old. Numbers for DeMar on the season. 4-1, 2.25 ERA, 17 games, 16 innings pitched, 13 Ks, 4 walks, only hitting 161 against him. So in for Leon defensively will be Damaso Espino. He will play first base. We will have a post-game fireworks extravaganza after this as well. Still trying to confirm a guess for the post game show. The yeah, 1 0 here. I presume we're still going to get a guess. I know that we, we do have this auction jersey, which sometimes inhibits guess, but I hope we still get one. Fastball inside, count 2 0. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. And then I don't want to I don't want to promise someone and then not have them show up. That would be bad. But 2 0 here in the Lopez. In for a call strike, 2 and 1. Louis Lopez is 2 for 32 against Somerset pitching this season. That's not good. It'll be a 2 1 here for the 40 year old Lopez. Foul tip off the mask of Carlos Guzman, the whole plate umpire. 2 2 the count. Somerset leads 7 1. They've blasted three home runs, a three run shot from Donahue, and solo shots from Smith and Montanez. Somerset also has RBI hits from Barden and Tucker. The Bluefish scored their lone run to tie it at one on top of the fifth on an RBI single by the nine hitter, Mike Richard. It'll be a 2 2. Hit up the middle for a base hit. So Lopez now 3 for 33 against the Patriots this season. Here's Almonte, who's one for three. Almonte has driven in 14 runs in his last 11 ball games. Here's Denny Almonte. Swing and a miss. Down 0 and 1. Mike DeMarc, the pitcher, likes to draw in his free time. His favorite baseball player growing up was Bobby Bonilla. I think the New York Mets are still paying Bobby Bonilla. But Bonilla was great in the Pirates. DeMarc grew up in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. Blue collar guy. This guy brings his hard hat, his lunch pail to work. Every day, he's a nice boy. A big to Mike DeMarc fan. When you think about this Patriots bullpen, it's been decimated. With players leaving, like Kyler Newton, Triple A Angels, Carlos Fisher, Triple A Braves, JD Reichenbach retired to pursue other interests. You know, you lost David Harden in spring training. 2 1 here. Jim Poey retired last year. 
know, you don't bring back guys like Joe Torres and, and uh, Cedric Ballard. You just replenish them with other quality guys. Lehigh, Daniel Herrera, John Lucas. 3-1 count here. Popped up, shallow left center. Sprinting in his tie right. He's going to haul it. Oh, that was scary. Nearly dropped it. One away. One on, one out. 7 1 Summer Send leads top of the ninth inning. Be sure to stay tuned for the Fleming Department Store post game show after the game. Maybe we'll have an interview, I'm not sure. We will have highlights nonetheless. We will look into the series finale tomorrow afternoon, or tomorrow evening, actually, at 5 05. And hand out some well deserved thank yous that you love so much. This ball is hit to third. Should be a double play. Five, four, three, double play. And the ball game is over. The Patriots win 7-1. Somerset is now 4-0 in the month of July, and they have now reached their high-water mark of 22 games above 500. Wow, the winning pitcher, Matt Langwell, the losing pitcher is going to be Matt Ionazzo. Nobody gets the save. Three home runs for Somerset. They scored five runs in the sixth inning to take the lead. They would never relinquish. Great day to be a Patriot fan. This crowd of 8,153 will enjoy a fireworks show next. We're going to step aside. We come back while the postgame show. Somerset wins at 7-1 to improve to 45-23 and on the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM. Com. Go three and a half here. Great work. How much time left, Lawrence? Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. So all the run scoring plays will do. Thanks, man. Yeah, Scott Kelly. <laughs> Major League Health College Stadium. Those are word processes. 
after graduation, our MFD printed the package to help keep your business up so you can take care of business and keep you on pace. Just everything stay organized. How to roll up? How can you offer a book for Abby's game plan at a good size? Stay on your game with Rubber Club. Visit Rubber.com. Welcome to the Fleming Department Store Post Game Show. Furniture, flooring, apparel, and wear for this is the Fleming Department Store Post Game Show. The Patriots prevail 7 1. They're now 22 games above 500. Matt Langle gets the win. Matt Ionazzo gets the loss. Somerset is now 4 0 in the month of July. This team continues to roll despite the fact they've already locked up a playoff berth for September 24th, the first round series. Let's run through some highlights here. There's a pretty good pitcher duel early on between Matt Langwell and Matt Ionazzo. Both pitchers made one blunder early on for Matt Ionazzo. It came in the second and one out. Montanez was at the plate. Left center field going back to Simmons to the warning track to the wall. It is gone. He's leading ninth home run for Luis Montanez. He recharged his batteries on the off day yesterday. And Somerset draws first blood. They lead one up here in the second. Bridgeport would get the equalizer in the fifth inning on an RBI single by Mike Richard and tied the game at one, but Somerset would explode. Six hits and five runs in the sixth inning. It all occurred with two outs, and Adam Donnie was at the plate. Hit the deep left, going back is El Monte. Warning track, oh, that ball is gone. Oh, go ahead, three run over for Donnie Baseball. Just like that, the Patriots are back in front. They lead four to one here in the six. Uh, seriously, I mean, does he want Nile or middle seat? That's the only thing left to decide for Adam Donnie. He has been fantastic this year. His sixth home, his fifth home run of the season. He now has 28 RBI as well. He's got six homers and 40 RBI all of last year. Edwin Masonette within reach of an air. Scott Kelly would notch his second hit of the ballgame. He'll join me in a matter of moments. And Johnny Tucker leads this RBI single. Serving to shallow center field's gonna get out for a base hit. Rounding third and heading for home is Edwin Mason S. The throw from Simmons will not nearly be in time. It's an RBI single for the straw that stirs this drink, Johnny Tucker. Somerset expands their lead to five to one here this day. And just for good measure, they would make it six to one when the next batter was Brian Barton. He strokes this one to left field. It's going to be trapped by Denny Almonte. Rounding third and heading for home is Scott Kelly. The throw up the first baseline. It's an RBI single by Brian Barton. The third straight hit for the Somerset Patriots in the spring. And they've broken it open and they lead 6-1 to one here in the six. Yeah, that sixth inning was epic. Ten batters, six hits, five runs. All five runs occurred with two outs. Somerset would put the cherry on top when Corey Smith let off the seventh inning. Great work in the highlights. It's this one a deep left. There it goes. It is gone. Oh, he continues to annihilate Brent for pitching. Right on cue. Get in city with it. His fifth homer against Brent Ford and his seventh round trimmer over at all. Wow. Patriots lead 7 to 1 here the seventh. And that would end up being the final. The bullpen did a great job. The guys like Herrera and DeMar coming in. Um, just got to be really pleased with the Somerset Patriots now. 45-23. and 23. If Somerset can win tomorrow and then win the first game of the doubleheader on July 30th, then they would have 47 wins in the first half. That would be a single-season franchise record for most wins in a single half. Let's refresh the computer and see how York fared against Lancaster. And York defeated Lancaster 2 0. So, congratulations to the York Revolution. They have won the first half Freedom Division title. So, the York Revolution and the Somerset Patriots have punched their tickets for serious September baseball. You have six other teams fighting out for two more slots in the final three months. Guys like Long Island, Camden, Bridgeport, Lancaster, Southern Maryland, and Sugarland. They'll all be fighting for two more slots. We know York's going to be in the postseason, and we know that Somerset is going to be in the postseason as well. The postseason will be going on September 24th, so it's kind of fitting that the Somerset will start the second half of the season on Monday against the other team that's made the playoffs. That is the York Revolution. This team continues to roll. Somerset is now 28-5 and when they score first. They're now 39-2 when they lead after six innings, and they're now 40-4 and 
when they score four or more runs. As I'm Justin Anselm, I'm joined by the player of the game, Scott Kelly. Scott, congratulations. What a great performance from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a good team win today. A lot of that, a lot of good hits today. Your first career multi-hit game. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, just, I, you know, I saw the ball well today. I just wanted to uh, you know, get good at bats in, do whatever it takes to help the team. And, uh, you know, luckily I found, found some holes out there. Does it help you out now, specifically this past week, that you're getting consistent playing time? Do you know you're going to be in the lineup every day? Does oh. it relax a little bit? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. You know, you start to, you know, when you're consistently in the lineup every day, you start to, you know, see more pitches, you start to get a you know better discipline up at the plate. And, I, you know, it definitely helps. But, you know, credit goes really to, like, to Shane and Brett and all the other guys. I mean, I'm the youngest guy on the team. And, you know, what they have taught me about having an approach at a plate has helped uh, me, you know, me get to the point where I am now. And, uh, you know, I'm looking to continue that. How about that sixth inning? Ten batters, six hits, five runs, all five runs with two outs. How resilient is this team? I know. This team, you know, there's no quit in this team. And it's just, uh, you know, it's amazing how, you know, we were talking about this before the game, how these guys just show up, you know, show up to play. And, you know, they play all 27 outs. And it seems like every time we're up at the play, you know, we try to make those 27 outs really hard for the other team. And, you know, guys come through clutch, clutch hitting, and you know, it kind of just spreads. You know, it's your first professional hit on Mother's Day, and you gave the ball to your mom. This is your first professional multi hit game, maybe the first of many, Scott. What are you going to do with the ball? <laughs> oh, man, I, was, I probably I gave, I gave it to a kid. You know, I gave it to somebody else that's more worthy of the ball. But uh, yeah, I gave my mom, a, mom, my mom the ball for uh, Mother's Day, and uh, she deserves it. Love you, Mom. You're a West Windsor product. I mean, how fun is it to be in front of 8,153 screaming fans on Fireworks Night, <laughs> Fourth of July weekend, and two hits, and your team wins? Oh, man, this is a great experience. I mean, just so, uh, you know, the crowd was great today. I mean, it was a sellout crowd, the most ever. And, uh, you know, just to be here on Fourth of July and, you know, being the Patriots, being American as we are, you know, it was just a great experience. And, uh, you know, looking forward to more W's along the way. Should somebody pinch you? Are you living the dream here, Scott? Your oh, hometown kid playing for your hometown Woo. team at just 23 years old, 7X big league. <laughs> In the squad. Yeah, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Of course, I'm living a dream here. I mean, I try to pick their brains, I almost pick it too much each day. And, uh, you know, it's just a gift to be on this team. And, uh, you know, you take, you know, I try not to take things for granted. And, uh, you know, it's really awesome every single day that I get to be with these guys in the clubhouse and just, you know, be in the family with them and just be a part of this, you know, great organization. I'm joined by Scott Kelly, player of the game, the outstanding uh, versatile infielder for the Somerset Patriots. A couple more for you here, Scott. How fun was that celebration on Tuesday night, that champagne shower? Your uh, first ever champagne shower. First ever champagne shower. It was unbelievable. Did they I, ID you when you get into the clubhouse? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, a couple of the guys that kind of were like, oh, yeah, I don't know, are you of age yet for the champagne? But yeah, you know, it was a great experience being, being the first time, you know, being in a champagne bath. And uh, I got to admit, it was awesome. It was <laughs> My first awesome. was last year. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Maybe the first of many as well. Hopefully. Uh, what's the mindset in these final seven games? I know this playoffs don't start until September 24th, but it seems like you guys want to win every game. Yeah, you know, we kind of go out. I mean, yeah, we clinch and everything, but we kind of we kind of keep the same mentality, the same attitude, uh, you know, day in and day out. And guys stick with the same routine. It's paying off here, and uh, we're not just, you know, we keep that switch on and you know, keep our foot on the gas pedal as much as possible, and, uh, you know, not trying to let up because every game's just as important. You got to teach Charlie Leone how to hit, man. Now, oh. now you have to be the veteran, and you got to teach this guy to hit 0 for 4 to his career. I want this guy to get a hit maybe come, tomorrow. I know, Charlie. Come on. We were hoping for him, but uh, you know, at least he was aggressive, though. That's what we wanted to see out of him. And, uh, you know, you got his hacks in, which are good. They're good power hacks. You know, that's what you want to see in him. You don't want to see him taking pitches or anything. Just go up there and bring, bring swing the bat. And that's what he did today, which was great. You know, hopefully he gets another knock next time up. The hometown kid living the dream. Scott Kelly, yep. thanks so much. Thank you so much, Justin. You do a great job as well. Go no pitch. It's a two-way street. That's Scott Kelly. I'm Justin. We're going to step aside. Final thoughts after this on the host game show right here on SPN.TV and 1450 WCTC.
All right, Mike, I'm just going to talk for SPN.TV. You can kill the, keep on playing the commercials. And for our SPN.TV audience, hello, everyone. Thanks so much. Going to send our final thoughts here on the television part of the broadcast. I want to thank our entire crew on SPN.TV, led by Andy Slowecki, Pat McManus, Andrea Lorenzo, Rick Dial, Josh Booner, Jim Johnson, Evan Moore, and so, so many more. Somerset is now 10. One when the Patriots play, when SPN.TV televises the game. Thanks so much for all your hard work. We certainly do appreciate it. Hope the fans enjoy the fireworks as well. Next broadcast next weekend. Thanks so much, SPN.TV.